Cable Regina is pleased to present the following sports program. The Canadian Junior Football League Final between the Hamilton Hurricanes and the Regina Rams for the Canadian Bowl. Today's telecast from Taylor Field in Regina is brought to you in part by Air Canada, Spalding, Johnston's, and the Canadian Junior Football League. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Taylor Field. My name is Barry Tam, and I'll be your sideline host today for Cable Regina. It's going to be an outstanding game here with a crowd, as you can see behind me, is uh, starting to get excited here as they're starting to have some of the opening ceremonies. Uh, we'll be going upstairs right away to our play-by-play -play crew, courtesy of 980 CKRM. Ron Rimmer will be providing that uh, expert commentary with color analyst Paul Barnaby. And as you can hear, the Hamilton Hurricanes are just starting to come out onto the field. And I think we'll go upstairs to the press box and we'll pick up all the opening ceremonies with our PA announcer, Don McDougall. JFL Coach of the Year, Frank McChrystal of the Regina Rams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Hamilton Hurricanes graduating players. Number seven, the outstanding offensive player of Canada, Jason Hayes. Number 22, Dan McAlonan. Number 27, Jason Warren. Number 28, Dave Bolton. Number 31, Nick Messick. Number 62, James Walton. Number 73, John. Tonkovic. Number 74, George Hughes. Number 76, Jack Sawatsky. And the remainder of the Hamilton Hurricanes under head coach Doug Trimble. Football in Saskatchewan just wouldn't be football without these two fine gentlemen and masters of the game. Please welcome the Rams, honorary captains for the Canadian Bowl. Both Rams graduates themselves, number 44, Roger Aldag, and number 57, Bob Poley. And now, please welcome the PGFC and Western Canadian champion, Regina Rams, starting graduating players. Number 35, Bob Aldridge. In his fifth year as a Regina Ram, the six foot, 200 pound fullback came to the Rams as a graduate from the sister McGuigan Mustang. Number 21, also his fifth year as a Regina Ram, the six foot, two, 196 pound wide receiver is a graduate from the Johnson Collegiate Wildcats. Number 55, Doug Huber, played four years with the Regina Rams. He is a 5'10", 215-pound rush end. He came to the Rams as a graduate of O'Neill Titan. Number 66, Tim McFadden, another fifth-year graduate of the Regina Rams. He is a 6'1", 245-pound center and a former graduate of the Martin Monarchs. Number 14, Brent Ripplinger also completing his fifth year as a Regina Rams. The 5'11", 185-pound slot back was a graduate from Riffle Royals. Number 33, Mike Rutten, with the Regina Rams for three years, a 5'9", 178-pound running back, came to the Rams as a graduate from the Sister McGuigan Mustangs. Number 15, Scott Sinclair, played four years with the Regina Rams, a 6'3", 200-pound defensive back, Came to the Rams as a graduate of the Sheldon Williams Spartans. Number 64, Ken Stistician, played one year as a Regina Ram. He's a former Edmonton Wildcat, a six foot six, 277 pound defensive lineman and graduate of St. Joseph's in Edmonton. And the remainder of the Regina Rams under head coach 
and Gord Curry Award winner, Frank McChrystal. The officials for today's game, referee from the Quebec Major Junior Football Conference, Mr. Andre Pru. Umpire from the Ontario Football Conference, Bill Butcher. The back umpire from the Manitoba Junior Football Conference, Greg Parker. The back judge from the Prairie Junior Football Conference, Mr. Hal Wilkie. Head linesman from the British Columbia Junior Football Conference, Mr. Kerry Anderson. And the line judge from the Prairie Junior Football Conference, Mr. Bob DeMonso. I draw your attention to center field where Mr. Gord Cooks, Commissioner of the Canadian Junior Football League, will conduct the coin toss for today's Canadian Bowl. The coin is a 1981 silver dollar, symbolic of the last time these teams met in the Canadian Bowl. Bill Butcher from Ontario, Terry Anderson from BC, my mic open? And Greg Parker from Manitoba. Hamilton, you'll have the choice when it's in the air. Your choice. Tail is it is? Regina, you've got a choice now, or you can defer it to the second half. We'll defer, sir. You'll defer? We'll receive. You want to receive. Which were you gonna kick? You defend that end? Switch side, please. Hamilton will receive. Have a good game, gentlemen. Our color guard for today's Canadian Bowl from the Royal Canadian Legion, branch number one. And our flag corps are the Air Cadets from Regina number 34 and number 703 under the direction of Commander Ron Cameron. Please extend a warm welcome, and especially a Regina welcome, to our participants in our ceremonial kickoff. His Worship, Mayor Doug Archer of the City of Regina. The Commissioner of the Canadian Football League, Mr. Larry Smith. The Commissioner of the CJFL, Mr. Gordon Cook. The President of the Hamilton Hurricanes, Mr. Wally Barubek. And the President of the Regina Rams, Mr. Bob Pelton. Gentlemen, the field is yours for the ceremonial kick. Better get deeper, Wally, he's been practicing. All right. Ladies and, gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, please, please rise, rise and join, join Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan recording, recording artist Maureen O'Sullivan in the singing, in the singing of our national anthem. anthem. Oh, 
I don't know. We've uh, been to every game this year. We've seen the Rams through a lot, and uh, it's very exciting. It's also getting the heart beating kind of fast, isn't it? Well, there's no question about that, and you just can't help but have a little nervous knot right in the pit of your stomach. Obviously, both teams working very hard to get here. You've uh, done all the practicing. You've done all the preparation. You've looked at all the films. Now all that's left to be done is to get out on the field and find out who's going to be the better football team here this afternoon. The players you really have to feel for in this game and, and be excited for are the graduating players. The Rams have eight of them, and we will get to them just a little later on, but we are underway. The Rams kicking off to the Hamilton Hurricanes. Matt Kellett handling the kickoff duties, and it is the running back for the Hamilton Hurricanes. That is number was at uh, number 22, Dan McElin, uh, the starting tailback for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Nice run back for him. Brings it up to his own 45-yard line. Right away, they're going with the hurry-up offense. The quarterback is Jason Hayes from the shotgun. On first and 10, wants to pass right away. It is complete to number two, Rob Gray. Well, a quick little play by the Hamilton Hurricanes. One of the things that they've employed all year long has been this hurry-up offense, and they're going to show it to the Regina Rams right away. Jason Hayes completes his first pass. He's got them up on the ball again. They're going to go without the huddle. First and 10, once again, will set up the offenses and defenses for you as soon as we possibly can. Can. Second down, or first down, and he completes the pass once more to the wide receiver. I believe that was number 22, actually, the running back, Dan McElhin. Dan McElhin, and coming out of the backfield, just leaking out into the flat, Jason Hayes out of that shotgun formation, finds him over on the right side, picks up about only three yards on the play, so after the initial first down again, Going with that no huddle offense, they've got the ball down to the Ram 50 yard line. It will be second and seven for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Jason Hayes, as we mentioned, is the quarterback. Dan McElhonan and Dave Bolton are the running backs again. Hayes back to pass, looking deep down field. And a great defensive play, like he's been doing all year long by number 29, Todd Fuchs. Well, Jason Hayes trying to go to his uh, offensive all star, all Canadian receiver, Andrew Wells, down the far sidelines, but Todd Fuchs, another all-Canadian cornerback. He's there with the coverage, knocks it down. So after an initial good pickup by the Hamilton Hurricanes, their offense stalls. They'll be forced to punt from the Ram 50-yard line. And it is number 29, Len Watkins, on to punt for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Back to receive, as always, Brent Ripplinger and Michael Ball. They are standing at about their own 10-yard line. The snap hits the ground. It's got away by Lynn Watkins, and Michael Ball takes it in his own five. Tries to get to the outside, cuts it back up the middle, and is brought down at a most the Ram 16-yard line. Well, the Regina Ram defense giving up a little bit on that first surge. We've got a penalty flag down around the 45-yard uh, line. We'll have to wait for the call from the official on that one, but very good punt by the Hamilton Hurricanes. Good return by Michael Ball. The Regina Rams, though, will be starting on offense for the first time here, deep in their own end, about their 16-yard line. Well, we didn't get a chance to set up the teams for you quite yet. We'll do that right now. Let's set up the uh, Ram offense, although the ball is coming back now. And I do believe the Hurricanes will Procedure. be again. Procedure, 73 playing on the line. Repeat, third down. It'll be third down over again for the Hamilton Hurricanes. 12 yards to go. They will punt this time from midfield. And again, it is the punter for the Hamilton Hurricanes, Lenny Watkins, a 37-yard average during the regular season for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Michael Ball, Brett Ripplinger now standing at about their own 17-yard line to receive Watkins' kick. This time, the snap is good. Watkins puts it up the middle, a low line drive kick that Ripplinger fields at about his own 22. Makes a nice spin move, gets away from a couple of tacklers, brings it across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. Well, that's going to be a little better field position for the Regina Rams as well. 44-yard kick the previous time. This time he doesn't get off quite as good a kick for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Brent Ripplinger only a 34-yarder. Ripplinger brings it back nine yards. Rams will start in the 26. Let's set up that Ram offense for you. Daryl Leeson, the leading uh, pass or I should say the second top passer in the PGFC this season is the quarterback, Mark Bernard, Bob Aldrich are the running backs, the slot back, Sean Harvey and Brent Ripplinger, the wideouts, Brad Bork and Michael Ball. Leeson wants to pass on first down as well. Looking for Bork. Oh, it is in and out of his.
his hands, Brad would, I'm sure, love to have that one back. I'm sure Brad would love to have that one back. Obviously, a great throw by Darrell Leeson. It just slipped between his arms. But look for the Regina Rams to do that a lot this afternoon. Harold Harris is the cornerback over on that far side. He's only 5'7", 135 pounds. Brad Bork is a little larger at about 6'2", and about 205. So look for that matchup all afternoon from the Regina Rams. The offensive line for the Regina Rams, Jeff Pennington, Scott Waters are the tackles, Doug Clark, Trent Langford are the guards, Tim McFadden is the center. On second down, Leeson is brought down in the backfield. Credit the Hamilton Hurricanes with their first sack of the afternoon. George Hughes getting through to make the play. Well, he's one of the big defensive players for the uh, Hamilton Hurricanes. They'll be expecting some big things from him. Jeff Pennington starting for the Regina Rams over on that far side. Hasn't seen much action, but Corey Borsa with an injured ankle is not able to go right away. We do expect to see Corey later on, but unfortunately for the Rams, big sack for the Hurricanes. Matt Kellett is now on to punt for the Regina Rams, a 39.1 yard average during the regular season. The snap is good. Gets away a high one up to midfield. McElroy fumbles the football. Who's got it? I do believe the Rams have their first turnover of the ball game. Paul, I didn't see who fell on that football, but I do believe it is Lloyd Linebacker. Yes, Lloyd McDonald. Big, big turnover for the Regina Rams. Just an outstanding punt by Matt Kellett. Hung it well up in the air. McElone had moved up to take it on the fly. He was unable to handle that ball. Fell to the turf. Lloyd McDonald comes up with the big turnover. Rams are out to their own 52 and a half yard line. Rams back on offense. First and 10. 11 minutes, 25 seconds left to go here in the opening quarter. Leeson with the pitch to Mark Bernard. He tries to get some tough yards up the middle, give him a gain of about four yards. Well, another All-Canadian out there, linebacker Nick Mezik for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Just in the middle there, just moving along, scraping behind that line of scrimmage. Mark Bernard picked up about three yards on the carry, got out over center field, but Nick Mezik moving up very smartly, puts a big hit on Mark Bernard. Gets him down after a short game. The D-line for the Hamilton Hurricanes, George Hughes, Roger Dunbrack are the ends. J.J. Nunn, Ben Peternell are the tackles. And I do believe we have a timeout down on the field. We will take one as well. You are listening to Regina Rams football. On Yesterday, uh, Ron Rimmer had a chance to talk to Hamilton Hurricane head coach Doug Trimble. And this is how the interview went. Doug, this is uh, kind of an exciting homecoming for you, so to speak. Explain. Yeah, it's nice to be back in Regina. I, I had the privilege of going to Moose Jaw Central High School for a couple of years and, and coming over to Regina and, and playing against Coach Curry and the Balfour Tech Redmond. Now, that wasn't too much of a privilege because they put the boots to us pretty good, but it's, uh, it's nice to be back in Saskatchewan, uh, familiar ground, familiar territory. Disappointed that the, uh, the railway station's all closed up because that used to be quite a, you know, an impressive building down there, but it's nice to be back. You have a whole lot of respect for the Regina Rams organization. Sure. Again, you know, when I was going to high school, playing high school football, I mean, the goal of everybody in our high school team was to someday be a Ram. And, you know, I had a chance to, to understand how important the Rams are to the community, um, how they're treated in the community, how the Rams themselves, you know, show great respect for the city of Regina and the province of Saskatchewan. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's a great organization to be playing against. What does your team have to do to be successful today and uh, get to take home that Canadian Bowl trophy? Well, yeah, I think we have to do the things we do best. And, uh, you know, offensively, we've got a lot of attention this year. Jason throws the ball very well. You know, Jay needs to have a great day. Um, we're fortunate we have three receivers who are all pretty good receivers. They've got to catch the football. Danny McElroy needs to have a great day, our, our tailback. Um, defensively, we have to be able to contain the, uh, the Regina running game and hope that we can, you know, take what might come from the passing game. But uh, I know, you know, Daryl's an outstanding quarterback, gets outside really well. Tailback's a good kid, too. So uh, we've got to stop their run and hope we can handle their pass, and we have to be able to move the ball on offense. You guys employ a tight end. We don't see that too much in football anywhere anymore. Yeah, we, we employ the tight end because uh, because Coach Nordoff, our offensive coordinator, is old. You know? <laughs> and uh, uh, I had the privilege of, of playing for Coach Nordoff. He was my head coach when I played for the Hurricanes. But uh, uh, we have a great kid who is a tight end. I mean, you don't find many of those. Most of those tight ends are playing basketball nowadays. But Stefano Pascalini is 6'4", 250, was away in a scholarship for a couple of years down south, is back, goes to Mac, but plays for us. And uh, Stefano is just such a great athlete that uh, we didn't want to use him as a tackle. We thought we could use him as a tight end. He's a good receiver. Uh, doesn't get a lot of passes, but sometimes get you know real crucial passes and blocks extremely well for a running game. What scares you about the Regina Rams? What can't you let them do? Uh, 
tradition. You know, I mean, they've uh, they've won four in a row against the Hurricanes. Uh, I think in all four games, the Hurricanes were ahead going in the fourth quarter or the third quarter at least. Um, we've got to make sure that we. Uh, we don't let them jump out early. We've got to make sure that if we do jump out early that we, we keep up our intensity. We've had a problem all year. Um, first four games of the season we, we beat people by 40, 45 points. In the last half of the season we started to jump out early and then sort of fall asleep. So um, we have to be able to play 60 minutes of football. Very interesting. I was just down the hallway and I went past the Hamilton Hurricane uh, dressing room. They've already got the 1993 CJFL championship sign up on their door, so uh, they're very they're very ready for it. Uh, another interesting note with the Regina Rams. One of their uh, star players, uh, number 55, Doug Huber, is not in the lineup today. Uh, the defensive players are wearing uh, number 55 on their ankles uh, once they got taped, so uh, they're into the game anyway. So it'll be uh, an exciting game. Uh, the action is back underway here, so we'll get back to the action. A of five yards. Well, just putting his head down. The Rams had that defense pretty well, but the uh, Macalona just putting his head down. Not a very big individual for the uh, Hamilton Hurricanes. He comes in at 5'10", 185 pounds, but certainly runs like he's bigger than that. It will be second and four for the Hamilton Hurricanes from their own 29-yard line. Jason Hayes looking over the Rams defense. They give to McElonen again, a little mix-up in the backfield, but he powers forward and should have a Hurricanes first down. Well, I think the Regina Ram defensive line was so surprised that the fullback got the ball that time that they actually were just sort of standing beside him. He managed to wiggle out there, get his head down, and picked up the necessary yardage, moving out to the 37-yard line of the Hamilton Hurricanes. They get another first down, seem to be on the move again. The Rams' defense, the ends on the line, Dennis Losey and Jamie Zalewski in for the injured. Doug Huber, Steve Uren, and Ken Stacioson are the tackles. The linebackers, Michael Milo, Randy Srochinski, and Lloyd McDonald. On first and 10, Hayes wants to pass. It is almost intercepted by Jeff Haggerty. Well, doing a good job of just dropping off in that zone, and Jeff Haggerty's had a great year for the Regina Rams. So far, he'd certainly like to have that one back as that would have been a big turnover for the Rams, but the important thing was he got up and knocked it down. The Hurricanes now looking at second and 10 from their 37-yard line. I think maybe a little case of the butterflies there is the only thing that kept Jeff Haggerty from intercepting that ball. Jeff is one of the defensive backs. Marco Ricci is the other. Derek Fink, Todd Fuchs are the corners. The safety is number 19, Danny Paskew on second and 10. Of course, Mr. Hayes wants to pass. Looking deep downfield, it is complete to Andrew Wells, and he is taken out of bounds by Todd Fuchs quite heavily, I might add. Well, getting his 200 pounds airborne on Andrew Wells, who's not a very big individual as well, but comes up with a good catch over in that far sideline, and that's going to be enough to move the chains as well. So this time, Jason Hayes just going from the conventional snap from center Manages to get back in the pocket and find his favorite receiver for a big 14-yard pickup. Todd Fuchs, of course, one of two Rams to be named all Canadians last night. The other being center Timmy McFadden. It is first and 10 for the Hamilton Hurricanes from their own 54-yard line. Hayes drops straight back to pass. Looking downfield, it is knocked away and a nice defensive play by Derek Fink. Managed to get his hand in there and keep that ball away from number five, Ron Lorette. Well, it's actually some very good coverage so far by that Regina Ram secondary. Derek Fink just backing out from his cornerback spot, reading that post pattern from uh, the Hamilton receiver, stepping over, knocking the ball down, falls for an incompletion. Hurricanes again, second and 10 from their own 54. I don't think there's any doubt they will be passing once again. They will do it 70% of their time, according to their head coach, Doug Trimble. The rush is on by the Rams. Hayes does have a lot of time. Across the middle, incomplete. It will be third and 10 for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Well, we see a little bit of a change of strategy again from Alex Smith this time, sending middle linebacker Randy Sorchinski straight up the middle and flushing Jason Hayes out of the pocket. He's forced to roll to his left a little bit to get away from that rush. Doesn't get a very good throw away this time as he got it in behind his receiver. Hamilton Hurricanes forced to punt. Len Watkins handling the punting duties. Brett Ripplinger res, uh, returned 26 punts for 224 yards during the regular season. Michael Ball also back there. He returned 15 for 141 yards. Watkins punting from his own 40. Bottles the football. Almost blocked, but did manage to get it away. Michael Ball coming up to get it. 
at about his own 40-yard line and is finally pushed out of bounds at about the 44. Well, a good job again by the Regina Rams that time, and they're going to start with some great field position about their own 45-yard line. We will take a timeout. No score in this Canadian Football Championship. Seven minutes, 16 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. You are listening to Regina Rams Football. Yesterday, uh, Ron Rimmer also had a chance to talk to Ram head coach Frank Mercristo about keeping things in perspective. I suppose you have to keep things in perspective. Um, really, though, the reason, some of the reasons why we haven't been back, though, is the fact that there's uh, much more parity in our in our Prairie Football Conference than there was t even 10 years ago. Uh, you know, uh, three times the teams that beat us and kept us from getting here were the teams that went on to win Canadian championships, 89 and 90 with the Colts and 91 with the Hilltops. So, I mean, we haven't been far off, but it's uh, certainly nice to be back in the, in the big game. All of this has changed your focus a little bit, and maybe the focus of uh, the Rams organization and maybe the focus of the people in Regina. They expected you always to be there, and it was no big deal. It got to be where it wasn't a surprise if you guys made it there. Yeah, I think that that's uh, sometimes uh, there's been a little bit of pressure, I suppose, put on because of the expectations of other people about about what uh, we're supposed to accomplish during the course of the season. But I think really what's happened is there's been uh, much more of an appreciation of how difficult it is to really get here. Uh, when you're younger and when you're, things are going really well for you, you ha have a, uh, I don't know if it's a tendency to take things for granted, but you certainly uh, have uh, have expectations for yourself and you believe that you should be there, you're supposed to be there, but uh, there's a little more to it as you get older and, uh, and you... Uh, and start to, I suppose, appreciate the fact of where you are and what you've accomplished. What concerns you about the Hamilton Hurricanes? Uh, I, I won't ask you if anything scares you about them because that's not your makeup, but what concerns you about them? Well, obviously they pass the ball very well. Um, they've got a great receiver. I, I think number 75 for them is uh, really outstanding. Um, but the other thing that we have to be aware of is the fact that they can run the ball. It's not just all passing. When they've had to run the ball, uh, they've been very capable and, and they've run the ball and dri driven the ball on teams when they had to do it that way. So I think, uh, you know, as always this time of year and in any football at any level, uh, you have to uh, defend against the run and make them pass. And then when you get into that passing situation, uh, you know, you, you hope that uh, your guy's better than their guy and, and just go from there. Finally, what an exciting matchup for Canadian junior football. Daryl Lease and uh, Jason Hayes, two great kids, uh, two great athletes. Couldn't, couldn't write it any better, you know. Jason Hayes uh, throws, a, throws the ball very well, but the important thing about the way he throws it is it's, it's uh, easy easy to catch you know the, the kids it's a catchable ball and that really has created a lot of success for them and you couple that with the fact that they've got uh, excellent receivers outstanding receivers uh, he, he's he's really someone to watch and and be excited about going to see uh, our guy Daryl Leeson is just a the complete athlete really he's able to throw he's able to run he's bright he's competitive uh, he's got a lot of tools too that it's just really been exciting to watch and be a part of with him all season long home as Brent Ripplinger came on that counter and put a good hit on Ripplinger as he turned up field. It's going to turn into a five-yard penalty for the Regina Rams. Move the ball deeper into Hamilton territory, now down to the 37-yard line of the Hurricanes. Brent Ripplinger, the all-purpose slot back for the Regina Rams during the regular season. Eight 18 receptions for 296 yards and two touchdowns. Also carried the ball 49 times for 286 yards and four TDs. Another 20 uh, carries for 131 yards and two touchdowns during the playoffs and five catches for 83 yards and two touchdowns in the postseason. He does it all for the Rams. On first and five, the pass is complete to the gentleman. We were just talking about Brent Ripplinger for another Rams first down. Well, quarterback Darrell Leeson doing a good job of changing the play at the line of scrimmage that time. Recognized the Hurricanes were coming with a blitz. Called the play off. Brent Ripplinger is on the same page as he is. Quick five yard out. And the Regina Rams get enough yardage for that first down. As Ripplinger got the ball down to the 32 yard line. The Rams will go from there, first and ten. Look for Brett Ripplinger, Paul, to have a humongous game here this afternoon. He is one of eight Rams playing maybe their final game ever of football, certainly their final game for the Regina Rams. Well, and that certainly gives you the extra incentive to go all out. There's nothing to save it for now. First and ten for the Rams from the Hurricanes, 33-yard line. On first down, Leeson wants to pass, has some time, looking deep to the end zone. Game. A 
Brad Bork was not going to be denied on that particular play. Again, that matchup that we talked about, it's Harold Harris over there at 5'7", 135, trying to defend Brent Ripplinger, or pardon me, Brad Bork, and he just goes up over top of Harold Harris, comes up with the big catch. The Rams are on the board first. And what a postseason it has been for one Mr. Brad Bork. Make that seven receptions now, Paul, and five touchdowns, and you couldn't be happier for this kid. It had been a tough regular season. He only got into one game because of knee troubles, and wow, it has been quite a postseason for one Mr. Brad Bork. Well, he is another one of the graduating players, and it looked very dim for him at the start of the year. Actually tore a knee ligament in the uh, training camp of the Regina Rams this year. He was able to uh, avoid having surgery, worked on his quads, got them all built up, got a special brace that the club provided for him, gets about a $75 tape job on that knee before the game, and goes out there and he scored a lot of touchdowns. So the Regina Rams have drawn first blood in this Canadian football championship. A touchdown pass of 33 yards. Darrell Leeson to Brad Bork. The Rams lead it by a count of seven to nothing. They will now kick off from their own 45. Matt Kellett handling those duties. Back to receive the kick are Dan McAlonan and number 26, Keith Anderson. Oh, this is exciting, eh? <laughs> It is. I'm just I taking can, a breath. I can barely breathe out here myself. <laughs> Five minutes and 48 <laughs> seconds are left to go here in the opening quarter. The Rams lead it 7 to nothing. This quarter seems like it's lasted about two hours. That is Anderson back at his own 10, looking for some running room. Has one down, man down to take him down, and that was the old Canadian, Todd Fuchs. Actually returning the ball there was Jason Warren. Well, Jason Warren just trying to get around the uh, corner there to see if he can get the wall. A big 57-yard kick by Matt Keller off that kickoff. Warren brings it back 12 for the Hurricanes. So Jason Hayes and his teammates in a little bit of a hole here, giving up that long touchdown to Brad Bork. They're going to start at their own 24-yard line. We'll see if the All-Canadian quarterback can answer. On first down, the give is to McAlonan. He's got some running room and will be awfully close to a first down. He's brought down by linebacker number 48. That is Michael Milo. Well, McAlonan showing some good speed that time, just taking that handoff from Jason Hayes and then a quick little burst to squirt through a very tiny crack, actually, in that Ram defense. The linebackers were unable to really get over quickly enough to put the clamp on him, but Michael Milo managed to grab him from the back, but not after he picked up. Enough for the first down. They're out to the 34-yard line. McElhone's a good one. The third top rusher in the Canadian Junior Football League this season. Again, he is running hard and will have another first down for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Well, this is very surprising to see this from the Hurricanes, actually. The Regina Rams, one thing they've been able to do all year long has been to shut down the run of opposing teams, but the Hamilton Hurricanes enjoying a bit of success here. McElhone now with four carries for a total of 32 yards, and there's still four minutes and 50 seconds left here in the first quarter. Well, their offensive line tackles Chris Fraser, Ralph Walker, Benny Buono, Tom Montgomery, the center, Dominic San Giorgio, doing a good job at opening up those holes right now. On first down that time, the give was to the fullback, Dave Bolton, give him a gain of three or maybe four yards. Well, just trying to give McAlone a little bit of a breather and get some misdirection from those Regina Ram linebackers. Fake pitch to McAlone and going around the right side. Quick handoff back to Bolton. He blasts up the middle, picks up about three or four. They're out to their own 51-yard line. We've got four minutes and 15 seconds left to go here in the opening quarter. The Rams lead the Hurricanes 7 0 in this Canadian Junior Championship game. The pass attempted for number two. That was Rob Gray, but a great defensive play by Derek Fink to knock it away. Well, Jason Hayes is starting off a little bit slowly, actually, in the passing department. Completed his first two passes, but now has dropped to three of eight passes for a total of uh, 28 yards. So what looked like was going to be a great throwing day for the Hamilton Hurricanes changed their game plan a little bit, and they've enjoyed more success actually running the ball against the Ram defense. Well, on third and six, no gamble here. They will punt. Len Watkins standing at about his own 36-yard line. Ripplinger and ball back to receive. You know what, Paul? Ripplinger ball, they're due to take one back all the way. You know that? 
Ripplinger fields it at his own 25. Tries to get away from one man, one man does. Up to the 40, makes another move, still going, and is finally brought down at about the 43-yard line. We will take a timeout. The Rams lead the Hurricanes 7-0 in this Canadian Junior Football Championship. You are listening to Rams Football. Hey, another uh, great afternoon of football here at Taylor Field. Uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, Ron Rimmer had a chance to talk to Jason Hayes, the great quarterback of uh, the Hamilton Hurricanes, about what he had to be to do to be successful today. We have the offensive line to back us up. They create the holes, and when you got holes, all you have to do is run the daylight. Concerned at all about the offensive line? I mean, all year long, Jerry Orban has had to patch these guys together, but every every game they've done the job for you. That's right. They they've proven themselves game in and game out that whoever's out there, they do the job. So, no, I'm not worried about that. I have 100% confidence in those guys, and I know they're going to give their, their all on Saturday. How much do you want to run today, personally? Whatever it takes. If I have to run for 100 yards, 200 yards, whatever it takes. If I don't have to run at all, just sit back and pass, I'm going to do what it takes. Perfect season so far, 11-0, but it won't be ultimately perfect unless you get that 12th one, huh? That's right, the 12th one's a biggie. Stats don't mean anything in the world without this W coming in with this game. You have perfect stats, but if you don't get the W for this game, you're going to feel a little bit down. So I think the W is more important than anything. Well, always in live television, I guess it was the clip with uh, Daryl Leeson, but uh, next time uh, we'll have a clip with uh, Jason Hayes, the quarterback of the Hamilton Hurricanes. It's a great afternoon, so uh, as we see, the crowd is starting to get into it here. We've got a great crowd here at Taylor Field, probably close to about seven or 8,000, and uh, I know all week it's been uh, hyped as the, the great game, the 1993 Canadian Bowl, so uh, hopefully the... Uh, uh, the fans are hoping that the result will be for the Regina Rams. I know there's people on the other side that would like to hope for uh, the Hamilton Hurricanes. Leeson looking deep downfield for Michael Ball. Has a rope. He has the catch to his roll down at about the Hurricanes 24-yard line. Well, Darrell Leeson really putting on a show here this afternoon. A big 44-yard pickup for the Regina Rams. Darrell Leeson dropping back in the pocket. Michael Ball just coming from his wide receiver position, running that crossing pattern. Darrell Leeson is able to pick him up, delivers a perfect strike to Michael Ball, just gathers it in, and a very fortunate for the Hamilton Hurricanes that number 40, or no, pardon me, number 15, Harold Hollis, was able to get over there and make that play. It will be first and 10 for the Rams from the Hurricanes 24 yard line. Leeson gets to Bernard, has a bit of a hole, and is brought down after a gain of give him three, maybe four yards. Well, very interesting situation developing here, I think, this afternoon. One would have expected that the Hamilton Hurricanes would be the ones that would be putting the ball in the air. Darrell Leeson now four out of five, or five attempts. He's completed four passes for 97 yards here in the first quarter, and the Regina Ram running game has not really been able to get on track as Mark Bernard only picks up about three yards in that carry. So a little bit of a roll reversal for these two teams. Second and seven for the Rams from the Hurricanes 20. Leeson has all kinds of time looking to pass. Tries to get it away. Nice one-handed grab by Ripplinger. Tries to get away from a tackler. Is brought down and he will be ooh, a couple of yards short of the first down. Be interesting to see what the Rams decide to do here. Well, the Regina Rams get a little bit of a break here on this particular play as Brent Ripplinger went up and made an outstanding grab of that particular pass from Darrell Eason. Looked like they were trying to set up a screen initially. But he went up and got his hand on the ball, gathered it in, and then as he was running to the far sideline, the ball actually came out, rolled slowly over to the sideline, and actually picked up a few more yards. So the Regina Rams are going to be spotted down at about the 18-yard uh, line, or pardon me, 17-yard line. And looks like Coach Frank McChrystal, not willing to gamble right away, is going to send on Robo Kicker Jr. Matt Kellett to try a field goal. <laughs> and he has been simply outstanding in the postseason. He has completed nine of 10 field goals, has only missed one, the longest one coming from 40. This one will be attempted from about the 24 yard line. The ball is back and down, and Kellett puts it through. Make it 10 to nothing for the Regina Rams on a 24 yard field goal by yeah. Well, very important for the Regina Rams to get out to a good start. We know that they can play football in the second half and have done that very well all year long. If there was any danger, it was that the Hamilton Hurricanes were going to get out quickly on them with that explosive pass attack that they possess. The Hamilton Hurricanes are the one that have been stopped in that passing department here this afternoon. 
They did show some good uh, running ability here the last time they had the ball. We'll see if they go back to that on this offensive possession. Jason Hayes is the quarterback. Dave McAlonan and Dave Bolton are the running backs. Hayes wants the pass, fumbles the football. What happened? No, they're saying it was an incompleted pass. A bit of a break there for the Hurricanes because it looked like the Rams were going to have themselves another turnover. Well, that would have been a huge turnover. Jason Hayes just stepping back from the quarterback and wanting to throw that quick hitch pass over here to the near sidelines. The ball simply fell out of his hand, though. Fell to the ground. The official on the spot calls it an incompleted pass. Very fortunate for the Hurricanes. They go now, second and 10 from their own 35-yard line. Trips receivers to the left side, the near side here at Taylor Field. Hayes looking to pass, looking deep downfield. It is complete to number five, Ron Lorette, but he is brought down rather quickly by uh, defensive back Marco Ricci, I believe, was on the hit there. I think that actually was a safety. Dan Pascu just roving around in the middle, just managed to pick up Lorette coming across after he made that catch and put a big hit on him. That might get his attention a little bit the next time he goes over the middle. So that's a play where you let him have a completion, but then you make sure that the guy's not going to come in there again later on. 45 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. The Rams lead the Hurricanes 10 to nothing. On first and 10, Hayes wants to pass. Gets it away for Bolton, but he is brought down right away by Marco Ricci. Well, Marco Ricci uh, reacting to that play very well from his defensive halfback, halfback position. Little pass here releasing to uh, Michael or Michael Bolton. <laughs> Dave Bolton. He grabs that ball, turns up field, but Marco Ricci is there with a good tackle. Gets him down on the Ram 52-yard line. You like that one, eh? Yeah, I did. That's as good as me calling uh, Mark Bernard Ray Bernard, I guess. <laughs> This could be the final play of the first quarter. The give is to McAlonen, and he will be stopped short of the first down by a couple of yards, and that should do it for the first quarter. I don't see any flags down on the play. The Hurricanes will be stopped short by a couple of yards of the first down. That will, in fact, do it for the first quarter. After 15 minutes of play, it is the Regina Rams 10, the Hamilton Hurricanes no score. In this, the Canadian Junior Football Championship, you are listening to Rams football. The first quarter score of 10 to nothing for the Regina Rams. Both these teams have long traditions here in the Canadian Junior Football League Championship. Uh, Hamilton, uh, maybe not the Hurricanes, but in 1909, the Hamilton Alerts uh, appeared in the their first one against the Toronto St. Mike's. Uh, unfortunately, it was a 7-2 loss. And in 1925, the Regina Pats football team, they played the Montreal Triple A's. Uh, the Regina Pats went down to defeat 6-4. So both cities have a long tradition of football. And uh, again, they're, re they're renewing it here this afternoon. So uh, with a first quarter score of 10 to nothing for the Regina Rams, I know there's lots of football left. Again, they bounce it to Watkins, but he gets it away. Not very deep, and it goes out of bounds at about the Rams' 31-yard line. Well, that call actually really surprises me by Doug Trimble. They only had a couple yards, maybe a yard and a half to go for the first down. They have shown some good success running the ball against the Regina Ram defense here. That punt only travels a, a very short distance for the uh, for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Only nine or 18 yards, pardon me, on that punt. So, might have been worth a gamble there to see if he could keep that offensive drive going, but. Regina Rams are going to get the ball now just out about their own 31-yard line. Their offense is back on the field. 14 minutes and 25 seconds left to go in the second quarter. First and 10 for the Regina Rams from their own 31-yard line. Leeson wants to pass. Gets it away to Ripplinger just over the defender's head. What a pass that was. Perfect timing. Perfect touch. It should be another Rams first down. Well, actually, that was a great play by Darrell Leeson showing some remarkable touch, just getting it over top of the linebacker's head, but in front of the defensive secondary of the Hamilton Hurricanes. Brent Ripplinger showing a lot of courage, goes high in the air, pulls it down, first down for the Rams at the Hurricane 41-yard line. You know, Paul, I said to you before the game, I, I was a little concerned about Daryl Leeson, maybe a few of the butterflies, his first big game of his career. He's only 20 years old, but he's showing none of that right now. No, remarkable composure, actually, for a young quarterback. The quick hitch pass to Josh Shaw on first and 10. He will be very close to another Rams first down. The first First completion of the afternoon for Josh Shaw. Well, again, Daryl Leeson just back in that pocket. The quick little pass to Josh Shaw. He puts a couple of good moves on. Gets his shoulders square and going 
north-south here at Taylor Field and gets up to the 50, almost the 51-yard line. They're going to have the final spot. Looks like they got to get to about the 51 and a half. So, again, just checking Daryl Leeson's stats. Seven for eight completions, 119 yards, and we're just into the second quarter. We talked about it during the week that Jason Hayes, with his stats, was probably going to win the Canadian Junior Football's Most Outstanding Player of the Year award. Daryl Leeson would get his chance to get even today, and right now he is doing that. The give is to Brett Ripplinger on second and one. He has a first down. We do have a flag down on the play, however. Well, the Regina Rams going in their very famous double diesel formation where they bring in two big fullbacks, move Brett Ripplinger, the uh, offside. normally the slot back Hamilton into the 42. tailback slot. Decline. They pick up some good yardage. First it was down. offside against the Hurricanes was the call, but they're going to take the gain, decline that penalty as Ripplinger moved the ball over center field into the 54-yard line of the Hamilton Hurricanes. It will be first and ten for the Regina Rams from there. Jamie Bailey, one of six Moose Jaw lads on this team, coming into the ball game at fullback for the Regina Rams. Actually, they've got two fullbacks in there, Aldrich and Bailey. The fake is to Bernard up the middle. Leeson wants to pass once again, looking for Ripplinger. It is complete. Gain of about eight yards out into Hurricanes territory at about the 46, make it the 47-yard line. Well, again, Brent Ripplinger just coming from his slot back position, bending out in the flat here uh, on the near sideline. Darrell Leeson again with a perfect strike. Three Hamilton Hurricanes around Brent Ripplinger, but he comes up with a big catch. Got eight yards, moves it down to all, just outside the 46-yard line now of the Hamilton Hurricanes, so that Ram offense is on the move again. I cannot believe, actually I can believe it, but what a fine touch Mike or Daryl Leeson is showing here this afternoon. He is having a whale of a ball game. On second and about two, it was the quarterback draw. Again, we have some early movement. Leeson should have the first down. We'll have to wait and see what the flags are all about, though. Preliminary signal is that it's offside against the Hamilton Hurricanes again, so it appears that they're likely lining up offside in this short yardage situation. Get the call right away from the official. That's going to move it five yards downfield and offside. keep this ram drive alive. Defense. All right, let's go down first to our down. man on the sidelines, Barry Tamman, with a very, very special guest and the second biggest Leaf fan in this city. That's right, Ron. I've got Roger Aldag down here, co captain today of the Regina Rams. Roger, what are your thoughts on today's game? Well, there's a lot of intensity down here, Barry, and it's a lot of fun. The fans out here are having a great time, and uh, just like to see the Rams punch another one in right now. Well, thanks, Roger. Uh, I know the riders are up at Edmonton, and we'll back to the action here with you, Ron. All right, on first and ten, the give is to Mark Bernard. He goes across the left side, should have a gain of about five yards. Some good hard running by young Mr. Mark Bernard, another one of those moose jaw boys on this Regina Rams team. Well, this is the best run that the Regina Rams have had the Hamilton Hurricanes with some pretty good penetration, but Mark Bernard just manages to get outside, put his head down, drives forward, gets the ball down to the 36-yard line of the Hamilton Hurricanes. He's got about a five or six-yard pickup on the play. No doubt we like it when we see penetration. It is always nice. 11 minutes, 50 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. The Rams lead the Hurricanes 10 to nothing. They give it to Mark Bernard once again. Top going. Looked like he was going to be down for a second. Got an extra couple of yards out of it, though. Well, Nick Mezik met him right in the hole, but Mark Bernard with a good head of steam up just crashed into him, managed to spin off and keep his balance. Twisted forward, got down to the 31-yard line of the Hurricanes. That will move the chains. The Regina Rams pick up another first down. Nick Messick, the middle linebacker for the Hamilton Hurricanes, also up for Defensive Player of the Year honors in Canadian Junior Football, but he lost it out to a uh, member of the Saskatoon Hilltops, Warren Musica. Congratulations to him for winning Canadian Junior Football Defensive Player of the Year honors. Little screen pass to Mark Bernard. Give him another gain of five yards. A nice play and a nice setup once again by Daryl Leeson. Well, again, a good play by the Regina Rams just drawing that defensive line of the Hurricanes in. Daryl Leeson flips the ball out to Mark Bernard. Fortunate for the Hamilton Hurricanes, just able to grab him from behind as it looked like he had a lot of running room out in that open field. But great tackle by the Hurricanes. Gets him down at the 25-yard line. Rams looking at second and four from there. We've got 10 minutes and 50 seconds left to go. The Rams are on the move. 
Aldrich, Bernard are the running backs. Ripplinger, Harvey are the slot backs. To give it to Bernard, has the blocker set up in front of him. And he'll have a gain of two more. The Rams will be third and will make it a couple yet to go. Well, this is going to bring up another interesting call for the Regina Rams. And it looks like the double diesel formation, those two big fullbacks, along with Ken Stacheson, a big defensive tackle for the Regina Rams, moves on to the offensive line. So they're going to gamble here. A big play coming up now. Ball's going to be down around the uh, 22 and a half, and it looks like they have to get to the 21 for the first down. So big play for both teams early in this ball game. You talk about Ken Stacius and Paul, a uh, kid who came over, wanted to be on a championship team, came over from the Edmonton Wildcats, and what an exciting time this must be for him. Third and two for the Rams to give us to Ripplinger. Has all kinds of run. He's down to the 10 yard line. I'll say he has the first down and then some. Well, a great play again by Brent Ripplinger, not just crashing into the line, but recognizing he had some room around the right side of that Regina Ram offensive line, turns upfield and gets the ball down to the 10-yard line of the Hamilton Hurricanes. Nick Messick coming from his middle linebacker spot makes a saving tackle on him at the 10-yard line, or Ripplinger would have been in the end zone. Always nice to see the ball in that man's hands. He always does something with it, and he has got stronger and stronger as this year has gone on. It's first and 10 for the Rams. Leeson takes the gift to Bernard. He wants to run. Then he wants to pass. Looking at the end zone. And it's intercepted in the goal line. Turnover for the Hamilton Hurricanes. That ball was picked off by number 27 for the Hurricanes, Jason Warren. Well, uh, there was no question that Darrell Leeson wanted to run this ball all the way. Did a good job of avoiding the first tackler of the Hurricanes. Recognized that he could not get around the corner. Brent Ripplinger was just in behind the defensive secondary of the Hurricanes, but actually probably should have run away from Darrell Leeson and gave him a little more room, better target to throw to, but unfortunate for the Rams, big play for the Hurricanes. They come up with an interception, and the ball's on their one-yard line. Time for the Ram defense to come up big with nine minutes, 35 seconds left to go. A lot of field ahead of Jason Hayes here. The give is to the fullback, Michael Bolton. <laughs> Actually, it's Dave Bolton. Give him a gain of a couple of yards. Well, I've got you doing that now. No, I did it on purpose. I know though. you did. I just wanted to make you feel bad. <laughs> Dave Bolton actually just struggling out to about the four and a half, five yard line. So trying to give that offense a little bit of room to operate in. But look for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Big play here now. They have to get out of their own end. Second and seven for the Hurricanes. Nine minutes left to go in the second quarter. <laughs> Hayes looking over that Ram defense. What's he gonna do? He gives it to McAlonan, and the Rams defense comes up big. He will gain a couple of yards, but it will be third and long for the Hurricanes. Well, actually, they're gonna spot that ball down. It looks like they had to get out to about the 11 and a half yard line, but no dice. They're not gonna have enough third down. The punting team's gonna have to come on. Eight minutes, 43 seconds left to go here. It has been, for the most part, a defensive struggle, but the Rams have managed to put a few points up on the board to take a 10 to nothing lead, a 33-yard touchdown pass from Daryl Leeson to Brad Bork, and a 24-yard field goal by Matt Kellett gives the Rams a 10 to nothing lead with eight minutes and 30 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. Punting from his own end zone this time will be Len Watkins. Let's see if the Rams put the rush on. No, they don't. They're setting up the return. Ripplinger will let it bounce. And it goes to Michael Ball at about the 50. Makes the move. Tries to get to the outside of the 40. The 35. And what a big hit there by number 45, Randy Srochinski. And a tremendous return by Michael Ball. Well, a very good job by Michael Ball of getting up field. We'll have to wait for the penalty call, but the Regina Rams got some great field position on this play. Rams lead the Hurricanes 10 to nothing in this Canadian Junior Football Championship. You are listening to Rams Football on 980 CKR. Well, with the Hurricanes trailing here at 10-0, yesterday we talked with Jason Hayes about what he had to do to be successful against the Regina Rams. Regina, 45! Jason, uh, what First kind down. of things does your offense have to do today to be successful? Um, we're we're going to have to control the ball. They, they like to run the ball, so obviously they've had success with ball control and probably time of possession all year. Uh, we like to think we can control the ball with the pass. We have all year short passing, long passing. We've hit our, we've hit pretty efficient all year, so 
We think we can control the ball, run or pass. The weather, is it going to make any difference whatsoever to your guys? I know you love to pass the football. 32 touchdown passes will tell us that. Um, well, in our two practices, we've had no problems with it. Uh, the field was pretty hard, but we're used to the turf, so that's not a problem. There hasn't been any wind in the stadium. We get lots of wind in either wind. But uh, the weather isn't that going to, we're going to pass regardless of what it's like. Have you watched a lot of film on the Rams? And if so, what scares you? What do you think you can get done against them? Uh, well, our defense usually mostly watches the films. Uh, I've seen a bit of them. They, they take away the long pass very effectively. They, they make you pass short. We, we think that may play into our hand a bit. We can, If we hit our short passes, they'll have to come up on them and we can mix them up after that. Are you excited about the matchup head-to-head -head with Daryl, both uh, for the Outstanding Player Award and in the game? Yeah, it's it's a nice honor to be recognized for the award. Uh, I was in the national final two years ago with Ottawa, and we lost, so this, this the win would really this would cap off my career really nice. So. What about going head-to-head -head with Daryl? Uh, I guess if you looked at it as a head-to-head -head match, we're the most two uh, different quarterbacks. Uh, I'm not going to move too much. Maybe once or twice a game, I'll step up into the pocket. But he, he's a very excellent athlete. He, uh, he r mixes his run with his pass really well, and he knows how to uh, throw while he's scrambling all over. So he's a great athlete. So we shouldn't expect you to be like Matt Dunnigan out there or uh, Damon Allen or uh, Doug Flutie then, huh? Uh, no, I'll... Uh, stick to uh, myself and uh, just drop back and throw the ball. Second of the game for defensive back Jason Warren. And Jason Hayes wants to pass. It is picked up by Marco Ricci. The Rams have another turnover as well. And we've got all kinds of extracurricular activity going on downfield. Big Ken Stacyson in that Hamilton Hurricane backfield. Jason Hayes just stepping back and laying that ball out there. Marco Risi gets a good jump on the ball that time and is able to step in front of it and pick it off for the Regina Rams. They've got their offense back on the field again. Marco Ricci, four interceptions during the regular season. I believe that is his first of the postseason. Uh, quite a little defensive back, that young fella. And definitely my most favorite name in sports. You're waiting Marco for, Ricci. You're waiting for him to open an Italian <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> Ricci's. First and ten for the Rams from the 43-yard line of the Hurricanes. The give was to Jamie Bailey, and uh, one of the Hurricane defenders got a hand on him and pulled him down after a gain of one and a half yards. Well, Jamie Bailey, one of the big fullbacks of the Regina Rams, 6'2", 242 pounds. Looks like he was just getting up ahead of steam, but one of the Hurricanes reached in, able to grab him by the ankle and trip him up. He only picks up one yard on the play down to the Hurricane 41-yard line, so the Rams will go from there now, second and nine. Aldrich, Bernard are the running backs. Mike Ball, Brad Bork are the wideouts. Ripplinger and Harvey are the slot backs. Gleason drops back to pass. Gets it out there for a first down. Is it complete? Yes, it is to Brad Bork. Well, Brad Bork just unable to keep his feet underneath him. Goes downfield and then hooks back up for Daryl Leeson. Good throw by Daryl Leeson that time. Brad Bork, though, unfortunate for him, couldn't maintain his balance. He went down, and in amateur football, as soon as you go down, whether you're knocked down by somebody else or not, that's the point where the ball is dead. The Rams will take over. 31-yard line of the Hurricanes with another first down. Leeson having a fine afternoon thus far, has thrown a couple of interceptions, maybe a couple of ill-advised passes, but that's to be expected. He's a little excited about this. The give is up the middle to Jamie Daly, fighting hard. You give him a gain of about three, maybe four yards. Actually, there's some pretty good strategy by the Regina Rams here right now, and that's run the big fullback straight up the middle against the Hurricanes, obviously relying on their condition and their size. They've got a lot of weight that they carry at that particular position, just blasting ahead and see if they can soften up the middle of that hurricane defense a bit. Nick Mezik does a good job, though, of responding to that challenge as he stepped up, met Jamie Bailey after about a two-yard pickup. Five minutes, 35 seconds left to go here in the opening half. The Rams lead the Hurricanes 10 to nothing. They fake the pitch to Bernard. Leeson looking to pass. Here comes the rush. And he is sacked on the play by number 74. That is George Hughes. I believe that is his second sack of the ball game. Well, he certainly is one of the defensive leaders for the Hamilton Hurricanes. And you can see why on this particular play, just getting around the offensive line of the Regina Rams and then putting some good pressure. Runs Darrell Leeson down from behind. 
That'll force the Regina Rams to bring on field goal kicker Matt Kellett. He's got his tee down at the 40-yard line, so he'll be trying a 40-yard field goal here to see if he can add to this 10-0 lead that the Regina Rams enjoy. And that is his longest field goal of the postseason so far. Should be an easy chip shot for Matt Kellett from here. Puts it up, but he's a little short on this one. It bounces at the goal line and into the end zone. That is McElonen going down on one knee and give the Rams another single point. They now lead the Hurricanes 11-0 in this Canadian Junior Football Championship. We will take a break. The score, 11-zip for the Rams. You are listening to Regina Rams Football on... With me on the sidelines right now is Regina Ram President, Mr. Bob Pelton. Uh, Bob, your thoughts on the game so far? Well, I'd rather be up 11 than down 11, but we've got a long way to go yet. Yeah, putting on the Canadian Bowl, it's taken a lot of work from a lot of dedicated people. I'm sure you got a few people to thank. Oh, there's too many to thank, but uh, we'll mention Don McDougall and Norbert Thurmeyer, the co-chair of this year's national final, but we've had dozens of people helping us. Uh, the media has been especially great. Yeah, it's been just a great a whole week of excitement here. Uh, I know uh, with the team with Frank McChrystal uh, at the helm, it must make you a little bit uh, more relaxed. Well, if we're, if we're winning at the end of the game, then I'll be relaxed. All right, thanks. Uh, that was the ramp president, Mr. Bob Pelton. Uh, he's uh, the host team here at the 1993 Canadian Bowl. It's just going to be an exciting afternoon here. The Rams uh, leading so far 11 to nothing. Uh, lots of time left, about four minutes, 58 seconds left in the uh, second quarter. And uh, it's going to be, as we can see the fans here, uh, it looks like she's going to be down to the last minute. go from their own 45-yard line, first and 10. Jason Hayes is the quarterback. The fullback is Dave Bolton. But Hayes wants to pass on first down, has a bit of time, then throws it away. It is complete. Downfield inside of Rams territory to about the 40-yard line. Didn't pick up the number yet there. That is number five, Ron Lorette with the completion. Well, a good play by Jason Hayes that time. He just looking downfield, was unable to find anybody open, so he started rolling out to his right, recognized he wasn't going to get around there, pulled up, just threw the ball downfield. Lorette coming back to it, makes a good catch in front of corner Derek Fink. So a big first down for the Hurricanes now as they're down to the 41-yard line of the Rams. They have a first down from there. Bolton the fullback. McAlonen is the halfback. Ron Lorette, Andrew Wells are the wide receivers. On first and 10, Hayes naturally wants to pass again. The rush is on. And he will be brought down on a nice defensive play. No, he's still going. I thought he was down, but he didn't get away. And he doesn't run very often, but he gets awfully close to the first down. Well, he did a very good job of getting away that time, just using his size to great advantage. Big 6'3", 230-pound quarterback. Looked like one of the defensive ends. Dennis Losey had him wrapped up uh, just about the line of scrimmage, but he manages to spin away, keep on his feet with some good balance, and get forward for a big nine-yard pickup. When it looked like he was going to be sacked, he's got the ball down to the 32-yard line of the Rams. Well, will they go for it here, or will they take a free one? They only need one yard for the first down. The give is to McAlonen, and a nice big play by the Rams' D-line. It will be awfully close. We'll have to wait for a measurement probably on this one. Yeah, it looks like they're going to have enough for the first down on his forward momentum. Carried him over the 30-yard line, and that'll be a big pickup for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Keeps this drive alive. So they're on the move here now after it looked like they were going to be stopped. A couple of big plays for the Hurricanes. They've got a first down on the Ram 30. We got to take another timeout. The Rams lead the Hurricanes 11 to nothing. You are listening to Rams football.
Well, with three minutes left to go in the uh, first half here, uh, the Rams winning uh, 11 to nothing at this point. I know the important part of a football is always the footwear. A lot of the Rams we can see on the bench are wearing the multi-sole uh, turf cleats here. Uh, the turf is a little bit damp. It's a special Omni turf here at Taylor Field. It's got about 300 tons of uh, silica sand in the fibers, and that holds it all down. It's a free-floating uh, uh, turf. Uh, other, when it does get wet, sometimes use the multi-purpose, uh, all-purpose, like a running shoe. Some of the players have that. Also, they can use the multi-purpose uh, so shark. Uh, a lot of the players have used these in the past, but it looks like the best footwear by uh, looking down the Rams bench. Looks like it's your basic all-purpose turf cleat here. And uh, once I say it's it's 11 to nothing uh, for the Rams. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a once again. It's just a great afternoon. The fans are really pumped up here, and uh, the Canadian Bowl is is going to be. Well, you can hear the music coming through. It's the 1993 Canadian uh, Bowl is just a fantastic event here, and I know the people in Regina have really taken to it. Like I said, they're close to probably about uh, seven to 8,000 fans here today at Taylor Field. Of course, the capacity here is 27,637, and on August 27th, the Riders had 33,000 in here, so it's gonna be uh, uh, not that many people, but they're making a lot of noise here. down for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Hayes complete to the wide receiver, Andrew Wells. Well, Andrew Wells is gonna be the favorite target of Jason Hayes that time. Again, he's doing a good job of getting away from that Ram rush, rolling to his right, delivers a perfect strike to Andrew Wells. They've got the ball on the Ram 15 yard line. The pitch is to Bacalonen and a nice defensive play by Jeff Haggerty to come up and make the tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Got at Bacalonen's feet and brought him down. What a play by Haggerty. Well, coming with the halfback blitz that time, Jeff Haggerty just taking off at the snap of the ball. He's blitzing right through the hole. Bacalonen had a good head of speed up, but Jeff Haggerty got into his legs, got him down at the line of scrimmage. So the Hamilton Hurricanes are going to take a time out here. They want to make sure that they capitalize on this right now. First or second and 10 now from the 15 yard line, Hamilton timeout. And let us go down to Barry Tammon. Hi, Ron, thanks. Uh, the turf down here is just a little bit damp, but not too bad. And checking all the footwear, it looks like everyone's using the multi-cleat uh, all-purpose turf shoe. Uh, sometimes they like to go to the basketball shoe, but it looks like uh, by most of the teams, that they're, most of the players out here, they're going to the multi-purpose uh, turf shoe, and that seems to be getting a lot of traction. I haven't seen a lot of slipping down here yet. Barry, I want to tell you, uh, we just heard from Willie Cole on one of his remotes. He says, thank you very much for stealing his job. Well, we're going to have to start calling him Willie Tammon. <laughs> yeah, the thin, the thin <laughs> Willie Cole. Oh, 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 is that a shot? <laughs> no, no, Willie, Willie get, Willie's a great guy. He does a great job on our radio broadcasts. And, sure uh, does. Hey, we're all looking forward to a Western final, getting Willie back down here on our field level on next Sunday, maybe. You betcha. Thanks, Barry. It is second and 10 for the Hamilton Hurricanes from the Rams' 15-yard line. The Hurricanes on the move. The fans waving those Ram reds right now. Hey, the rush is on! It is incomplete. Almost intercepted by a couple of rounds, but it was knocked away. And it looks like the Hurricanes will have to settle for a field goal here. Well, I think very important for them that they do try to get some points on the board. And it would be amazing to me that Doug Trimble would gamble down here when it's third and 10. But a great job by that Ram defense, Alex Smith, deciding to send some pressure at Jason Hayes and not letting him sit back in the quarterback brought both Lloyd McDonald and Randy Sorchinski up the middle that caused the big play for the Regina Rams now the Hurricanes are going to have to attempt a field goal Len Watkins good on three of eight field goals in the postseason this one will come from about the 22 yard line Hayes is the holder the ball is down and up and it is wide Danny Pascu back in the end zone goes down and concedes this single point. A little extracurricular activities going on there. Looked like Lloyd McDonald having a few uh, nice words for Jason Hayes. <laughs> it looked like he was having a chat with him. Obviously one of those linebackers coming hard on the previous play, so he's certainly fired up. But the Regina Rams dodge a big bullet that time. The Hamilton Hurricanes had driven down to their 15-yard line. 22-yard field goal goes wide, and the Regina Rams only give up a single point. Well, the Hurricanes put up some good stats on that nice long drive, but you know what they say about stats, Paul? That's right. On first down from their own 35, Leeson wants to pass. 
It is complete to Josh Shaw, and he is forced out of bounds at the 50-yard line. That'll be another for a John Rams first down. Well, again, a very good throw by Daryl Leeson. We've commented on this all throughout the year as well, that he's at his best when he gets back in that pocket and fires the ball out to the receivers. Not actually that accomplished yet and just laying it in there, but he's enjoying a tremendous afternoon here now, 11 of 14 for 156 yards. It has been quite an afternoon for the 20-year-old. He has looked awfully good. Leeson on first down from the 50. Wants to run. Can he get away? He's got about three or four guys chasing him. And you know he's going to hang on to the ball this time. He will not try and throw it away. And give Leeson a gain of maybe three yards. Now he's going to pick up on about three yards on that particular play. Again, just unable to find anybody open downfield. Some good coverage provided by that Hurricane secondary. He manages to get away from that blitz, though, and showing his good speed. Gets around the corner, picks up about three yards, moves the ball out to the 53-yard line of the Regina Rams. They'll go from there, second and seven. Leeson looking over that Hurricanes defense. What's he going to do on second and six? Wants to pass. Has some time. Now has about four guys chasing him. It is complete to Todd Ortner. Another Rams first down inside of Hurricanes territory at about the 45-yard line. Well, a big play for the Regina Rams. That time, Sean Harvey just going out from his slot back position. Curls over the middle. Darrell Leeson again with some big heat from that front four of the Hamilton Hurricanes. Manages to get around the corner, buys himself some time, throws a perfect strike. The Rams are down to the 45-yard line of the Hurricanes. My apologies to Sean. I only saw the two, and I had seen Orther in there a little earlier at slot back. Sean Harvey's first catch of the ball game on first down. Leeson wants to pass again. Again, it is complete to Harvey. And again, it is a Rams first down, down to the Hurricanes 30-yard line. Well, we saw the Regina Rams down here earlier, uh, and they were able to actually get down to the 10-yard line of the Hurricanes and came up with a big interception to snuff that drive out. But we're going to have the Hurricanes a little shaken here by this offensive drive of the gotcha. Regina Rams. They're going to call a timeout with one minute and 38 seconds remaining to be played here in this first half. One of the things that uh, some of the Ram receivers were mentioning to me, Paul, uh, during the week was the fact that the Hurricanes defenders play very much off the football. That is to say, a few yards, more yards than normally away from the line of scrimmage. And that's giving the Rams all kinds of time to set up their patterns and get into a good position to catch the football. Well, what the Hamilton Hurricanes don't want to do, and I understand they had a little bit of trouble with this during the year, is giving up the big play. But certainly against this Regina Ram offense, they don't want to let those receivers get in behind them. So doing a good job of keeping them in front, but they are giving up some yardage. Let's go down to Barry. Paul, hey, I got a little weather report down here. The first few signs of a few ice crystals coming down here. Right? They uh -oh. talk about the shoes, and then all of a sudden it starts to snow, snow down here. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. So <laughs> I, hope we, I hope that goes away. Can't you do anything about that weather, Barry? Yeah, well, I tried. Talk to Father Basil Chomas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing down here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Barry. First and 10 from the 30. And we have some early movement. A free one for the Regina Rams. And it's Coming back, a little premature excitement. Well, no question about that, and I didn't see where the movement was, but they got the Regina Rams on an illegal procedure, procedure. call. A huge Regina. play, Darrell Leeson recognizing, 21. thinking that he had a free Repeat one. First down. Decided to go to that quick hitch to Brad Bork, who made an outstanding catch. Took the ball all the way down the field into the end zone, so, but it comes back for the Regina Rams. A big penalty of five yards, moves the ball back to the 36 yard line. Regina Rams will go from there now, first and 10 with a minute 32 remaining to be played here in the first half. Far be it for me to correct you, Paul, but it is first and 15 for the Rams from the 37-yard line of the Hurricanes. Leeson wants to pass again. It is complete to Sean Harvey. Makes a nice move, gets away from one man. He'll have, it was a long pass, but he'll only have a gain of about seven yards. It'll be second and about eight or nine for the Regina Rams. Well, he picked up the five that they lost on that procedure penalty on the previous play, and then another couple, so that'll put them in a second and eight situation now from the 29-yard line. Again, a minute 20 remaining to be played here in the first half, so the Regina Rams certainly want to be careful here. They want to come away with a field goal at least. 
One minute, 10 seconds left to go. Leeson drops straight back to pass again. Over the middle for Harvey. That should be another Rams first down inside the 20 to about the 18. Well, again, doing a good job of just getting into the middle of that hurricane defense, settling into the soft area of that zone. Daryl Leeson picks him up right away. Throws a perfect strike down to the 19-yard line now. So a very impressive-looking drive by the Regina Rams here late in the first half. 55 seconds left to go. Can the Rams put some more points up on the board before the end of the first half? Mason wants to pass again. Looking for Michael Balds. Complete. Tries to get away from one tackler. Cannot do it. Is hauled down after a gain of give him oh, only a couple of yards on that one. Well, yeah, he's not going to get very many yards on it, but again, a good job of just finding the open area. Look for Michael Ball from that wide receiver position now after maybe hitching up a little bit to take his next pattern a little deeper and see if he can get in behind the Hurricanes. And we're going to have another timeout called here, and I think the Regina Rams have called it this time. Well, one thing we haven't mentioned this afternoon, and I apologize for that. We didn't do it off the top of the show, but uh, the referees from all across Canada this afternoon, Paul, uh, from Drummondville, Quebec, the head referee is Andrew Poole. From Oshawa, Ontario, Bill Butcher is the umpire. Greg Parker is the back umpire from Winnipeg, Manitoba. From right here in Regina, the back judge, Hal Wilkie. From Langley, B.C., the head linesman, Kerry Anderson. And from Saskatoon, the line judge is Bob Dumont sold. Well, a very good crew and actually a very big game for them as well. Those people are chosen for their abilities that they've exhibited all throughout the year and certainly is a great honor to be selected to do the Canadian National Championship. A huge play coming up right here for the Regina Rams. Second and eight, they have it. From the Hurricanes, 14-yard line. Leeson wants to pass. Looking over the middle, and it is knocked away, incomplete. It will be third down, and on comes Matt Kellett to attempt the field goal. Well, that's certainly the Regina Rams again after a very impressive drive here late in this first half, wanting to put some more points on the board. They've got an 11-1 to lead right now. They'd certainly like to up that and carry the momentum of scoring at the end of the first half into the dressing room. There's 40 seconds left, so Matt Kellett can punch this through. The Hurricanes will get one other shot at it. Matt Kellett, one for one, excuse me, one for two so far this afternoon in the field goal apartment. This will, one will come from about the 25-yard line. Ripplinger is the holder. It's down and up, and it is wide. Andrew Wells going down on one knee in the end zone and give the Rams another single point. They now lead it 12 to one with 38 seconds left to go in the opening half of this, the Canadian Junior Football Championship. Well, the Hamilton Hurricanes, just as the Regina Rams dodged the bullet on their previous possession on offense, driving down to the Ram 15 yard line and only coming away with one point. This time the Regina Rams on a very impressive drive, actually had the ball in the end zone, but it was called back on an illegal procedure penalty they are only able to come up with the one point. So both teams struggling a little bit here. They seem to be able to move the ball well between the 20s, but they're having trouble putting it in the end zone. It'll be first and 10 for the Hurricanes from their own 35 with 38 seconds left to go. Don't look for Jason Hayes to just uh, run out the clock here, although on first down, he does give it to the tailback, Dan McAlonan, give him a gain of four yards. Well, Dan McAlonan continuing to run hard for the Hamilton Hurricanes, straight up the middle into the teeth of that Ram defense. He picks up about four yards on the play, and they'll go from their own 39-yard line now, second and six with 34 seconds remaining to be played. We've got a timeout actually called on the field again. The Regina Rams calling a timeout and seeing if they can force the Hurricanes into a punting situation. So this is an interesting call. One of the guys I do feel a little sorry for, Paul, is uh, defensive lineman Dougie Huber, a gentleman who has had an outstanding five-year career with the Regina Rams. Maybe, no not maybe, has been one of the best defensive players in all of Canadian junior football throughout his career. Picked up an injury a couple of games ago, not able to play today. Unfortunately, this is his final year with the Rams, and you really do have to feel for that young man. Well, no question about it. He's really been a leader on defense for the Regina Rams from that rush end position that he plays in, and certainly gets a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Fortunately for him, he took actually an injury that's not one that you can sort of play through. It's a neck injury and just unable to go today. On second and six, Hayes is back to pass. The rush is on, Kenny Stacyson 
I do believe they will call it down there. Credit the sack to the former Edmonton Wildcat, Kenny Stasison. Well, a big play by Kenny Stasison just bursting through from his defensive tackle position. And Jason Hayes is a big, strong quarterback at six foot three, 230 pounds. But Kenny Stasison is a big, strong defensive tackle at 6'6", 275. He gets one hand on Jason Hayes, drags him to the turf. Big sack, the Hamilton Hurricanes are going to have to punt the ball back to the Rams with 22 seconds remaining to be played here in the half. And what a time this would be for the Rams to run one all the way back. We haven't seen it yet this year, and you know what? That's probably the only thing we haven't seen the Rams do this year was return a punt or a kick for a touchdown. And they might not get a chance to this time. Time count violation right there against the Hamilton Hurricanes. Time count violation. Hamilton number 29. Which is actually maybe not such a good idea Third down to get to the ball yeah, game because they're going to have to move back and let those Ram punt returners move up a little closer too, aren't they? Yeah, the only good thing about it is for the Hamilton Hurricanes, there, are, there is only seven seconds remaining to be played, so any kind of a long return, even if the Regina Rams do get in a position, it's unlikely that they're going to have a chance to get their offense back on the field here at the end of this first half. Well, it looks like they put a couple more seconds back on the clock. Nine seconds now left to go the opening quarter or excuse me the opening half 12 to 1 the Regina Rams lead the Hamilton Hurricanes and this the Canadian Junior Football Championship Watkins gets away a low line drive kick that Michael Ball kind of lets bounce all the way back to the 40 yard line we do have a flag down no yards will be called and we'll wait for the indications from the referee here, but that should do it for the first half, I do believe. We'll do it for the first half, except there is a penalty, so they're going to get one more play in here for sure, unless they were offsetting penalties. They may wave it off, but there certainly were penalty markers on the field out there. I have to wait for the call from the official right now. They've got a group of them down there discussing it and deciding what they're going to do, but there is no time remaining on the clock at this point in time. Let's wait to see what the referee has to say about this one. No yards. Hamilton number 19. Holding no yards call. Regina oh, number. We also have a holding call against 64. the Regina Rams. First down, Regina. Will be first down for the Regina Rams from their own 41-yard line. The half cannot end on a penalty, so they will get one crack here. And what do you think they're going to do, Paul? I think they'll put it down and... Well, who do you think they'd throw the ball to in this situation? Mr. Brad Bork. I think that's a very good call, and you could probably <laughs> be down there in the sidelines and take Frank McChrystal's spot. Uh, just looking at the uh, Hurricane defenders, they are standing about 15 yards off the line of scrimmage. Leeson will pass the football, has a little trouble with his footing. Leeson puts it way up in the air. Attempted for Michael Ball, and what a catch that young fella just made, but that will do it for the first half, folks, and I'll tell you what, he is not a very big guy, but he went up between two guys, and maybe even three guys that were taller than him, but he still came down with the football. However, that will do it for the opening half. We have a very exciting guest coming up. The CFL Commissioner, Larry Smith, is here at this football game. He will join us in just a few moments, but here at halftime, it is the Regina Rams 12, the Hamilton Hurricanes 1. The halftime score here at the 1993 Canadian Bowl. The Regina Rams 12, the Hamilton Hurricanes 1. Last night, uh, it was an exciting night in uh, Regina with the CJFL Banquet of Champions. And uh, last night, there were some special presentations. Uh, Norbert Thurmeyer, co-chairman of the 1993 Canadian Bowl and a past president of the Regina Rams, had a special presentation, the CJFL Life Membership Award. It is indeed a great honor and pleasure for me to be uh, when I was asked to present this next award, the CJFL Life Membership, uh, this gentleman's involvement in junior football began in 1973 when he became a director of the Regina Ram Football Club, a position he has held ever since. As a Ram director, he has held virtually every position within the organization, including serving as president of the Ram Football Club in 1980 and 81 when the Rams won back-to-back -back national championships. This year, he is co-chairing the Ram National Final Committee. I've probably left the secret out of the bag by now. Uh, just an example of his uh, commitment and dedication 
as a volunteer to our community, uh, the Outstanding Player Awards that you're going to see on the video screen here shortly was a collaboration of about 10 different kinds of videos uh, that were received. Uh, this gentleman spent last Sunday at 8 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock at night putting together this tape along with people at the local cable TV show. Uh, that's what you call commitment to your community. His drive and enthusiasm within the Rams has led him to active involvement with the PGFC from 1978 through to 1989. He has served as PGFC registrar, secretary, vice president, and ultimately president in 1988 and 89. His 12-year involvement with the PGFC from 1978 to 89, the PGFC won eight national championships. That record speaks well, not only for the teams that were involved in those competitions, but also for the executive that led the PGFC in those years. His 12-year direct involvement with the PGFC has made him an active member and participant in the CGFL regular meetings that have gone on. In addition to his regular and direct involvement with junior football, he has served seven years as a board member of Football Saskatchewan. He has also been involved with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, initially as a volunteer beginning in 1971 and as a director since 1978. He has been a member of the management committee of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders since 1988 and is currently chairman of the Riders Amateur Football Committee. The Regina Rams as well as junior football across the country benefit from having key supporters such as Don McDougall involved with the CFL and junior football across the country. Don and his wife Jill reside in Regina where Don is principal of a local elementary school within the Regina Public School Division. It is my pleasure to call Don McDougall to receive a CGFL Life Membership Award. Don. Uh, that's not fun. When you do the script and lay out everything, you should know what's coming up. Uh, <laughs> But to the members of the CGFL, I uh, express my sincere gratitude for this award. The, the award is only a s significant little token of the friendships that you make along the way. Uh, whether it's guys like Frank McChrystal, they must all know by now your nickname is Slick and at one time tried to pick up my wife <laughs> and then found out that... Uh, <laughs> as, as Norbert Thurmeyer said, hey Frank, that's his wife. <laughs> Have you met Dawn yet? <laughs> We're over at a player's party one night. Uh, I go back to an individual who invited me on to this board with the Regina Rams, and that's Tom Shepard. Uh, for any of you that know Tom, his heart is as big as this room. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here tonight. He's in Calgary with business, but I thank him. I thank Gordon Curry and all of his staff I thank Jerry Zabitnik, who was our coach in 80 and 81 when we had back-to-back -back national championships. But more importantly, I thank the friendships such as Wally, who unfortunately we beat in 80 and 81, but I didn't want to bring that up again. <laughs> but I want to uh, thank all of those fellows, <laughs> all of those fellows who have made this time so enjoyable. And uh, last but not least, I want to thank uh, my wife, Jill, um, there's many nights you spend out at the Rams clubhouse. Uh, I think back to the times when Greg Feger and his little daughter was out there. He was playing. I had my daughter out there. Or the years that I spent with Roger Aldag um, and a very memorable time down in uh, Hamilton after a national championship. Those are, are what make you want to volunteer. And to all of you, I thank you very much this evening. Am I reading correctly? The winner is Frank McChrystal.
game plan actually called for me to make the physical presentation and not to say what I perhaps should say. Uh, Don McDougall alluded to uh, Frank as being called the slicker and uh, almost uh, walked off with his wife from the Ram Clubhouse. Well, you ain't heard nothing yet. <laughs> I, I guess seriously, there was a, a great thinker, philosopher, and educator by the name of Pear Athel Murray, Notre Dame College, Wilcox, Saskatchewan. And he used to insist, as I remember, that rugged individualism was what made Canada great and will continue to make Canada a great country. I'm sure, as I recall, because Frank and I had an association in a relationship of coach-player for five years, and I survived. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure what Pear Murray had in mind uh, when he was talking about rugged individualism was Frank McChrystal. However, there was another great thinker, philosopher, a guy who dabbled a little bit in coaching football by the name of Vince Lombardi. Uh, who said that individual commitment to the group effort is what makes a team work. And uh, although Frank had this great knack of showing uh, his individuality from time to time, he also was very conscious of his individual commitment to the team. I think, uh, as I have observed Frank in his many years of coaching to date, that the one great contribution that he has made and brought to his players has been through insisting that those two important ingredients of success be respected and maintained, for which reason he has guided his team to be here tonight and to have the opportunity of a thrill of a lifetime to play against this great Hamilton team coached by their great coach, Doug Trimble. Frank, on behalf of Football Canada, uh, I'll have to admit to a little bit of bias, I, I just take great pleasure in presenting you with this with this award. <laughs> Once again, I guess we've blown it. Uh, coach, coach of the year. Well, as you see, Doug, you're not missing much. Uh, Gord always. Uh, Gord was out at the clubhouse earlier on this year and talked, uh, talked to us and they, uh, some of the players said, well, what kind of player was Frank? And he didn't really want to answer that because uh, he, he wanted to talk about Jerry Orban, who coaches with us now. And he said, you know, Roger Aldeg is one of those players that a coach dreams of coaching. Jerry Orban, one of those players that a coach dreams of coaching. Bob Poley. And the guy said, yeah, but what about Frank? Those guys were sucks. <laughs> Gord liked those guys, but they were sucks. He had way more fun coaching me. <laughs> uh, actually, it, it was very difficult and, and it's certainly a long road trying to get up here to this podium simply because if I had have had some of the assistant coaches between me and the podium, they would have been up here instead, I'm sure. As it was, I had to uh, tell Paul Barnby to sit back down that uh, he's not the head coach and certainly not coach of the year. Uh, I'd like to uh, certainly thank Football Canada for this and I think it's really important that we recognize that awards like this are not, are really very much not individual awards. They're awards that, uh, number one, I suppose, give some recognition to the program that they're involved with and, 
and the Regional Prams are very proud and honored that they can be a part of this and be recognized that they have a group of individuals within the program that are doing a good job. Um, number two, I think the important thing to recognize about this is that it's a recognition of all football coaches, all junior football coaches across the country. I don't think that there's a best one or there's even a better one than others. Uh, there are countless individuals that are involved in coaching as the executives talked when they were giving their awards for executive and life members. And those people do it on a volunteer basis and they do an outstanding job. Uh, so it's, it, again, a recognition of, of junior football coaches across the country. With that, junior football is a very important part of not only our tradition in Canada in athletics, but really a foundation of, of the people and the reason we exist as a country and as a nation. It is young men that strive and commit to discipline and hard work to take those things that make them special as human beings and add them to a total goal. Junior football has to be a very, very important ingredient of our society and our country as a whole. Some of the players that play on this team choose to go to university. Some of the players that play on these two teams choose to work, choose to look at apprenticeship programs. There are plumbers, there are electricians, there are every kind of uh, individual that takes and is important to make up this society and make Canada the great nation that it is. We would be at loss, a very dear and, and dire loss, if we would ever lose junior football in this country. Because someone doesn't go to university, it doesn't make him any less of an individual or any less important in the whole scheme of things across this country. I think that we need to recognize that and once we recognize that and realize the goals and the objectives of junior football as a whole in developing our society and strong men and strong leaders in our society uh, will work well together and again become stronger because of it. <laughs> Certainly I'd like to congratulate the Hamilton Hurricanes on being here representing Eastern Canada. Uh, this will be the sixth time that I've had the opportunity and the pleasure of of competing against the Hamilton Hurricanes and they have just been outstanding games and nothing but complete and total respect for that program and the individuals and people that have participated in it. Congratulations to Doug Trimble and his coaching staff, the entire Hamilton Hurricane organization. I'm hopeful that the people in Regina are going to come to this game tomorrow. I'm hopeful that they're going to uh, look at this game as a competition of young men across our country and realize it for that kind of quality of people and individuals and future leaders in our country. Congratulations, thank you very much, and I'm hopeful of a very good and excellent competition and game tomorrow. Thank you. We're going back up to the booth here with Ron and Paul for the play-by-play -play of the second half. Underway in the second half, that is Michael Rutten. His first time handling the football this afternoon has some running room to the outside across the 30 trying to get away from one man but is brought down right at that 30 yard line michael rutten well trying to use his good speed to get around the corner trying to set up the hamilton hurricane defender by just cutting back inside and then trying to break to the outside but good job by the hurricanes of making sure they kept that contained the regina ram offense enjoyed a very good first half they're going to start the second half now just inside their own 30 yard line we are just underway in the second half. The Rams lead the Hurricanes 12 to 1 here in the third quarter in what has been an exciting football game to this point. For the most part, dominated by the defenses, two very good ones. Hey, these guys didn't get here for nothing, did they? Well, no question about that. We're going to get a penalty right off the bat. It looks like the uh, Regina Rams are going to be penalized for uh, time count violation, so unfortunately for them, time didn't get everybody violation. on the field right away, and Regina they seem to be seven. still probably they mulling over the halftime talk that Coach McChrystal gave them, and as a result, they're going to lose five yards on that. They'll start from the 25-yard line, now first and 15. Offensive coordinator Bernie Schmidt won't be too happy about that. Done a remarkable job with this Rams offense. First and 10 for the Rams, now from their own 27. The give is to Mark Bernard, and he is brought down in the backfield by a blitzing number 31. That is Nick Messick, the middle linebacker. Yeah, but unfortunately for the Hamilton Hurricanes, they're gonna get caught for offside on that particular play, so just jumping a little bit too early that time. That'll get the five yards back that the Regina Rams lost for a time count violation, so we're back where we started this second half. 
just inside the Rams 30-yard line, first and 10. Corey Borsaw comes into the ball game at one of the tackle positions for number 53, Jeff Pennington. The wide receivers are Brad Bork and Michael Ball, Sean Harvey, Brett Ripplinger are the slot backs, Aldrich the fullback, and the give is to the halfback, Mark Bernard, flags down on the play again. Usually at that point of the field, it means a holding call. On first and 10 for the Rams, give Bernard a gain of three yards. Let's see what happened. Well, it is going to be holding against the Regina Rams that time late after the play developed. So one of the offensive linemen obviously just getting a hand in there and grabbing a hold of somebody. Holding, but Regina 59. Out pretty good on defense here, shutting down, down that run. And again, I have to go back to that because the Regina Rams have been able to run the ball on virtually every team that they've played against this year. But that Hamilton Hurricane defense has been very tough on that run this afternoon. Forced Darrell Eason to go to the pass and he has responded remarkably well in the first half. They get first and 20 now from the, for the Rams from their own 20-yard line. Eason will pass on first down, has some time, puts it up in the air for Josh Shaw. It is incomplete. He could not haul that one in. Well, again, just trying to go down the near sidelines here. Josh Shaw just streaking down the field, but some pretty good coverage provided by that Hurricane secondary. Darrell Leeson unable to get that ball in there, so the Regina Rams now again back inside their own 20-yard line, looking at second and 20, so a big play coming up for both teams. Another thing we haven't seen the Rams do a lot of this afternoon, Paul, that did work during the regular season was the counter play to Ripplinger. They have tried it uh, once this afternoon, a gain of about five yards. On second and 20, Leeson wants to pass, has all kinds of time, looking for a wide open board, makes the catch at the 51 yard line. What a catch by Brad Bork, and a first down for the Rams. Well, Brad Bork was out with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders training camp early this year as an undergraduate player of the Regina Rams, and did a very good job up there with them, and he's just carried on here now, coming back from that knee injury, and doing a great job here this afternoon of getting downfield and then going high in the air to make that reception out over the 50-yard line. So the Hamilton Hurricanes had the Rams in a bit of a hole, but they managed to scramble out, move the ball out to the 52-yard line, first down for the Regina Rams. So far this afternoon, Bork has three catches for 73 yards and a touchdown. Leeson calls his own number, goes on the draw, and he should have another Rams. First down. Well, a good job by Darrell Leeson that time as he was one-on-one -on -one with Nick Messick, that linebacker of the Hamilton Hurricanes, a 22-year-old rookie with the Hurricanes who actually won the Rookie of the Year Award with the uh, in the Ontario Football Conference, played a couple years down at Weber State. Darrell Leeson gave him the old limp leg, went by him, got the ball down to the 47-yard line of the Hurricanes, first down from there. 12 minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the third quarter. The Rams lead the Hurricanes 12 to 1, and this is the Canadian Junior Football Championship. On first and 10, Lisa wants the power. Oh, the 30 down to about the Hurricanes 27 yard line. Well, I think we're going to have to talk a little bit about the offensive line of the Regina Rams. Darrell Leeson is enjoying a great afternoon, but the reason he's able to stand back there is that he's getting some great time up front. The veteran Tim McFadden leads that offensive line as an all-Canadian. They're doing a good job of keeping that heat off Darrell Leeson, allowing them to time to find the open receiver. He's responded and moved the ball. And let's give Mr. Jerry Orbit, the offensive line coach, a lot of credit. He's had to go with some packs. We're looking for the end zone for Bork. No, just out of his fingertips. Brad lying down on the field there. Thought he maybe could have had that one. Well, again, going with that quick strike offense, just sending Brad Bork deep downfield. The Hurricane with triple coverage over there in the corner. Three guys went up in the air. Brad Bork actually got his hands on the ball, was unable to bring it in, so falls for a long incompletion. Sitting on the 28-yard line, the Rams will be looking at second and 10. Well, one thing the Hurricanes will not be expecting here is a run. Maybe the Rams can surprise them with that. A draw. <laughs> Bork. And ball, the wideouts, Ripplinger and Harvey of the slot backs looking across the middle for Mark Bernard. He was hauled down by Nick Messick. Awfully close to interference there. Well, he was right on him with some pretty good coverage actually from that middle linebacking spot. Picked up Mark Bernard who came out of the backfield just trying to hook up in the center. They'd like you to usually send out two receivers in that and put the middle linebacker uh, basically in the soup and see which one he goes to and then throw to the other guy. But Nick Messick does a good job, provides some good hit, a good hit on uh, Mark Bernard, and that'll bring Matt Kellett back onto the football field to try a 35-yard field goal. 
Kellett so far this afternoon, good on one of three field goal attempts. This one is down and up, and this time it is wide once again. And the Hurricanes will concede another single point. The Rams lead it 13 to one, and you are listening to Regina Rams football on 980 CKRA. Well, last night, uh, Commissioner Larry Smith of the CFL arrived in town, and he was a special guest to the Banquet of Champions, and here's what Larry Smith had to say. On behalf of the CFL, it is a great pleasure for me to be here. I'd like to congratulate the teams participating in the game tomorrow, also the recipients of the uh, awards. Uh, I'm sure Alan Ford, uh, the great number 22 for the, oh, sorry, number 21 for the Saskatchewan <laughs> Rough Riders. Al, did you ever win a trophy that big? No, neither did I, but... Uh, it's great to see uh, the, uh, and if you look at the awards, you'll see some of the history and tradition, uh, which I think exemplifies uh, junior football in Canada. Uh, I would like to wish both teams uh, good luck. As for the players in the room tonight, fellows, I think uh, you have a great opportunity to exhibit your talents and skills. Uh, I think uh, from a uh, on-field performance, we should see a very interesting game. If there's one thing I hope that you take away from your experiences in playing football, uh, it is the camaraderie and the fellowship and the ability to make great friends that hopefully you'll take forward in your lives. One thing I would ask you to do in terms of your thought process, to make sure you keep all your options open. Uh, if you're working fantastic, uh, try to go through and get as much schooling as you can. It's when you're about 35 or 40, you realize sometimes how important it is to be able to get through school. One thing I found in my own life was that football taught me a little bit about discipline and helped me in school because uh, when I didn't want to study, it was like playing football. Sometimes you have to do things that you don't like to do. And in today's society, especially with things the way they're changing, if you think it's competitive in your game, you should see how competitive it is in business. From a CFL perspective, we're really pleased with the graduates of junior football that have come up into our league. We have fellows in the room tonight who have done very well in the Canadian Football League. Uh, we had 10 fellows participate at our evaluation camp last year. I believe a couple of individuals. I think, Tom, you made the team uh, coming from that evaluation camp. We will uh, encourage the participation of junior football again in our evaluation camp this year. Hopefully, we will have more ball players who will attend so that you will have that opportunity to play, if you would like, at a higher level. To punt the football away, we've got Barry Tammet down on the sidelines. Thanks, Ron. With me is the other co-captain here today, Bob Foley, longtime CFL leader. And Bob, what do you think of the game today? Oh, it's exciting. It's too bad the Rams couldn't put up any points, but uh, they're getting points. You know, one single here and there, but uh, they're in the lead, and that's all that counts. Another graduate of Hudson Bay there with Daryl Leeson. Uh, you were saying you were a better athlete. Oh, way better athlete, but uh, Daryl's looking good tonight. <laughs> he's uh, finally coming into his own, but no, it's... Uh, He's a great athlete coming on Hudson Bay, and he's having a good day, and uh, he's throwing the ball well. All right, thanks, Bob. Back up to you, Ron. Thank you so much, Barry. On third and 19, that's definitely Len Watkins' best punt of the day. Chases Brett Ripplinger back to his own 40-yard line, making some nice moves, and brings it out to the 50, where the Rams will begin first and 10. That was very unfortunate for the Hamilton Hurricanes on that last offensive series. That bad snap going over Jason Hayes. Two storm. One. Congratulations, Andrew. Richard. CGFL All Star. Keep working out. Hi, Nick. <laughs> You know what they say, Paul, defense wins championships. Right now, the Ram defense is uh, keeping their team in this game. Actually, it's hard to say that when you're leading 13-1, to but they have done a remarkable job here this afternoon. Yeah, they've really shut down Jason Hayes and those receivers, but it's a long afternoon to go yet. First and 10 for the Rams from their own 40. The pass attempted behind the line of scrimmage. Do we have a turnover? Yes, we do. Wow. The pass attempted for Chad Eamon, I believe it was, and it was behind the line of scrimmage and behind the quarterback, Darrell Leeson, and that will go as a fumble and a huge turnover for the Hamilton Hurricanes, who will have it first and 10 for the, from the Rams, 32. Well, if the Hamilton Hurricanes are going to get into this ball game offensively, this is going to have to be where they're going to do it. A big momentum changer there with a big loss by the Regina Rams. 
Hayes leaves his team out, first and 10 from the Ram 32-yard line. Nine minutes, 35 seconds to go. He gives us to Dan McElroy, and a great defensive play there by Lloyd McDonald to bring him down after a gain of a couple yards, give him three on the game. Well, again, a little better job by the Regina Ram defense that time of closing down that run. McElroy hits that line of scrimmage very hard, but the linebacker, Lloyd McDonald's there with a big tackle, limits the gain to about four and a half yards. Gets the ball down to the 28-yard line of the Regina Rams. They're looking at second and about six from there. Jason Hayes is the quarterback, the top passer in all of Canadian junior football this year. They try the reverse, has some open room, but he is hauled down short of the first down by the cornerback, Todd Pukes, the All-Canadian, and he certainly played like an All-Canadian right there. Well, Andrew Wells has some outstanding speed, actually, and as he tried to get around that corner, he thought he was going to have enough speed to carry him around the edge, but Todd Fuchs, who runs a 4-5-40, closed up on him with remarkable ease, was able to get him around the shoulder pads, throw him down at about the 26-yard line. That's going to leave them four yards short of the first down, and Looks like the Hamilton Hurricanes are going to be attempting about a 34-yard field goal. Glenn Watkins, his second attempt of the afternoon. His other one went wide for a single point. Let's see what happens here. This one is also wide. Danny Paskew goes down on one leg. A little trouble for the field goal kickers here this afternoon. It is 13-2 now for the Rams. Well, the Regina Rams dodge a tremendous bullet there that time. Daryl Leeson just throwing that ball backwards to Chad Eamon, who was unable to come up with the catch. It bounced in front of him. Couldn't cover it. Hamilton Hurricanes had a tremendous offensive opportunity there, but appears that they've squandered that chance now, only picking up one point. Let's also credit that. Rams defense once again for standing tall. We've seen it from them all season long. They would bend just a little, but they would not even come close to breaking. Here's that counterplay to Ripplinger we talked about and give him a nice gain of about five yards and again credit that offensive line led by number 59 Doug Clark on that play who opened a nice hole for Brett Ripplinger. Well, we said hello to uh, Dennis Losey's grandma and I think I better do the same thing. I hope my grandma's watching on uh, uh, cable TV down in Hamilton, so I really got trouble here. Uh, <laughs> obviously connected with the Regina Ram Football Club. My grandma lives in Hamilton, yeah, well, but just doing I'd like to say hello to her today. Okay. Grandma, we, let's get serious being a bad boy as per usual. No, only my partners. <laughs> they give us the Mike Bernard. He has a nice hole this time, and give him a first down across the 45 to about the Rams 47 yard line. Well, that looked a little bit more like the Regina Ram running attack that we're aware of in behind Doug Clark and Corey Borsa that time. A good hole opened up for Mark Bernard. He puts his head down, gets a good head of speed up, crashes out over the 45 yard line to about the 48 yard line. He's got enough for the first down. Rams will go from there, first and 10. Seven minutes, 35 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. The Rams lead the Hurricanes 13 to two. The gift is to Jamie Bailey. He fights hard, fumbles the football, and thank you very much, Scott Waters. He just saved the day. Bailey fumbled the football. Waters comes up with it, and he should give the Rams a first down, actually. Well, actually, you're right. That was a good play by Scott Waters, just coming from his offensive tackle position. He was on the other side, away from the play that time. Jamie Bailey, with a good head of steam up, had about a five-yard pickup, but the ball popped free. Scott Waters going downfield to see if he can pick somebody else up to block, and ball fell at his feet. He drops on it, and that'll put the Rams very close to another first down, second and just inches. Well... They say you got to be good to be lucky. The Rams certainly were there. Scott Waters will get a nice pat on the back from Jamie Bailey, I'm sure, when the offense comes off the field. Seven minutes, 10 seconds left to go, folks, here in the third quarter at Taylor Field. This is the Canadian Junior Football Championship. The Rams lead it 13 to two. Leeson wants to pass, looking for Michael Ball. Oh, almost an outstanding catch by Ball, who had to jump over the defender. That was number 15, Harold Harrison. Almost a tremendous catch by Michael Ball. Good effort. Well, they've really gone after Harold Harris here this afternoon and just trying to take advantage of the fact that he's only five foot seven. Michael Ball is not much taller, but possesses some tremendous leaping ability. He went high in the air, just unable to squeeze it, but it was a free one for the Regina Rams. Second and inches they decided to go downfield and see if they could come up with a big play now they'll be gambling on third down they've got that double diesel formation in there Leeson bobbled the football a little bit has 
some open room, gets it down to the 40 yard line. Looked like he might have taken that one a bit of ways, but uh, we do have some flags down on the play. And what is the call? Procedure against the Rams, it's coming back. That's gonna be procedure against the Rams and that's gonna take them out of that gambling situation now for sure. Matt Kellett is gonna come onto the field. They're gonna be forced to punt the ball procedure. away to the Hurricanes, but Darrell Leeson 35. just bobbling that snap, but Repeat then showing his down. remarkable athletic ability scampering downfield. It goes for naught, though, as the Regina Rams have to punt back to the Hamilton Hurricanes. Matt Kellett on to punt the football for the Rams. He hasn't had to do a lot of that this afternoon. Twice. Two times. What's his average at? 38 yards. This will be his third punt of the ball game. Punting from his own 37-yard line. And almost blocked, and it didn't travel very far. Looks like it'll go out of bounds. Inside of Hurricane Territory at about the 47. Matt Kellett having a few problems right now. And do we have a timeout on the field? Yes, we do. Six minutes, 24 seconds left to go in the third quarter. The Rams lead the Hurricanes 13 to two. You're listening to Rams football. Well, the 1993 Canadian Bowl is being produced here by Cable Regina, but it's also going all the way across Canada. Here are some of the names of the uh, cable companies that are showing our game. Uh, Shaw Cable in Edmonton, Halifax Cable, Shaw Cable 10 in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, just up the road, Chilliwack, CableNet, Chilliwack, BC, Cable Services in Moncton, New Brunswick, Hamilton Cable, home of the uh, Hurricanes, bringing it in. Lake Superior Cable, Sault Ste. Marie, Prince County Cable Vision, Summerside, Prince Edward Island, like to say hello to everyone out there. Cable 14 TV in Hamilton, and Shaw Hinton and Hinton, Alberta. Just some of the cable companies bringing the 1993 Canadian Bowl live, some of you on tape delay, but live to your homes today, live from Taylor Field in Regina. And I guess uh, the score 13 to two here for the Regina Rams. There's lots of play left here, 624 in the third quarter. Also, here's some, some special sponsors of the Canadian Junior Football League who have made this uh, just an outstanding uh, year of football. Spalding Canada, Air Canada, Jostens Canada, Sport Canada, Football Canada, and a special thank you to uh, 980 CKRM Radio of Regina and Cable Regina for providing uh, live coverage of the 1993 Canadian Bowl live from Taylor Field in Regina. It's a little dark here. They've got the lights on now here for the third quarter, so uh, we're back to play, and it's going to be a great afternoon. Get ready for the fourth quarter. Well, a great group of linebackers for the Regina Rams, 20-year-old players. They've got another couple years left with this football club and just doing an outstanding job here this afternoon. Randy Sarchinski comes up with a very big interception for the Regina Rams. He brings the ball back to the Hurricane 43-yard line. Rams have it there, first and 10. A very dejected Jason Hayes over at the Hamilton Hurricanes bench being consoled by head coach Doug Trimble right now on first and 10. The fake is to Ripplinger. Leeson has all kinds of time looking for an open Brad Bork. Does he have it? Yes, he does. Inside the five at about the four yard line. First down Rams from there. Well, again, Daryl Leeson just doing a good job of standing in that pocket, letting the protection in front of him take care of that Hamilton Hurricane rush, looking over on the far sideline for Brad Bork. Throws a great pass out there, but Brad Bork does another fantastic job on the other end of that particular play, going up between two Hamilton Hurricane defenders, making the catch. The Rams have the ball on the Hurricane uh, five-yard line. Tell you what, I'm sure Mr. and Mrs. Leeson are down from Hudson's Bay like they always are for this game, and I'm sure they're listening right now on 980 CKRM. Want to say hello to them, and hey, your son is having one heck of an afternoon. Well, he certainly is. He's now 20 for 29 for 330 yards. Just a remarkable afternoon for Daryl Leeson, and there's, only, and there's still five minutes and 27 seconds left to be played here in the third quarter. And what about Brad Bork? He's having a nice afternoon as well. Well, Brad Bork now has four catches for for 106 yards and one touchdown, so he's done a great job in 
what may be his last uh, football game unless he's able to catch on with some team in the pros next year. Let us also credit that Hurricanes defense a little bit. There have been a few occasions where the Rams have been deep in their territory but have not come away with too much. So they have bent a little, but uh, they haven't broke too much. Well, you can certainly say that about their defense because the Regina Rams have been down in scoring territory and tried a couple field goals and missed, had it down to the 10-yard line, unable to come up with anything. So they've done a good job of keeping the Rams off the board. It is now first and goal. The good is to Ripplinger. Gets down to about the one and is forced back, but... He should be down to the one, maybe two-yard line, a gain of about three yards. Well, it looks like they're going to have it at the two-yard line. I think what you're going to see here is the Regina Rams just go with that double diesel. They're going to take three cracks, try to get that ball into the end zone. We see Tim McFadden here dragging big defensive lineman, Ken Statistician, out of the uh, fray. A little bit of heated tempers down there right now, but certainly a very big offensive series for uh, the Regina Rams here. The give is to Ripplinger, he is in for the touchdown! Again, just going with that double diesel formation, putting those big fullbacks in front of slot back Brent Ripplinger, that quick handoff by quarterback Darrell Leeson. Brent Ripplinger does the rest, just vaulting into the end zone, and you can see the Hamilton Hurricane defense now looking very dejected down there. As they're bending over, they realize that they have given up a big touchdown here. Well, I noticed Brett Ripplinger threw the ball into the stands, and uh, radar, Brad Hirschmiller was very quick to uh, go into the stands and get that football back. We gotta take a break here. First, we'll wait for the uh, convert attempt from Matt Kellett. The ball is down and up, and it is through. You can make the score, folks. The Regina Rams 20, the Hamilton Hurricanes 2. This is the Canadian Junior Football Championship. Now on the sidelines, a CFL veteran, Roger Alday, co-captain of the Regina Rams. Roger, how's the game going? It's going real good right now. I think right now the scores may be flatter in Hamilton a little bit. I think uh, the Rams missed a few opportunities, and right now uh, they take it down again. A defense is holding, score a few more points. It looks good. Well, you played in a few of the national championships. Any fond memories of the ones you played in with the Rams? Now, they're always fond memories when you win, and today it looks like another victory for the Rams. Well, that's great, Roger. I know the Riders are up in Edmonton. They've got a big game up there. Uh, uh, any predictions for the Great Cup in uh, 1993? Oh, for sure. The Riders will be there. It'll be a big game tomorrow, and it's going to be a great weekend for Saskatchewan, the Rams and the Riders both. Well, that's great. Thanks, Roger. Roger Aldag, 17-year veteran of the CFL with Saskatchewan Rough Riders, a graduate of the Regina Rams. Uh, played on numerous national championships and uh, you know he was just put into the Plaza of Honor and uh, when you talk football in Saskatchewan you mentioned Roger Aldag and the Regina Rams and uh, it goes hand in hand all those national championships and Grey Cup in 1989. Thanks Roger. On the kickoff quite a return by the running back, Dan McAlonan, has given the Hamilton Hurricanes outstanding field position well inside of Rams territory, down at the 33-yard line. Well, the Hamilton Hurricanes that time just running a little bit of a reverse, getting the flow from that coverage team of the Rams going one way and then coming back the other. McAlonan does the rest with some good blocking out in front of him, down to the 33-yard line, first and 10 for the Hurricanes. On first and 10, the give is to the fullback this time. Dave Bolton give him a gain of three yards. Well, again, just straight ahead, the Hamilton Hurricanes again going to the ground. They've really taken away that passing game from Jason Hayes, and I'm sure he's quite frustrated with what's gone on here this afternoon. Really unable to find his receivers open. As a result, their greatest success has been on the ground here today. It will be second and make it three yards to go for the Hurricanes from the Rams' 27-yard line. Hayes wants to pass, cuts, 
still looking around. Going across the middle, almost intercepted by the safety, Danny Pascu. But he made an outstanding defensive play to knock the ball away. Well, the Hamilton Hurricanes are shortly going to get into a situation where they're going to have to gamble on third down. They're obviously deep into Ram territory here. The 26-yard line, a little bit of discussion going on at the sidelines as to what they were going to do. And trailing 20 to 2 now with 3 minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the ball game. They have elected to send their field goal kicker on the field to try another 33 and a half yard field goal. He has missed his two attempts so far this afternoon. Let's see what he can do this time. They're going with the fake. Attempted pass for McElroyan. Nothing doing. He is brought down by Derek Fink. And the Rams will take over at their own 30 yard line. Well, I saw them talking over on the sidelines and obviously discussing that fake field goal is what they were doing, electing to try to put some points on the board. Obviously, a touchdown would be very important to the Hamilton Hurricanes there. Fortunately for Jason Hayes, just overthrew Dan McAlonan, who was trying to get around the corner of that Ram defense. So, again, the Ram defense on special team gives up a lot of yardage, but no points. The last time they had the football, the Rams marched the length of the field and capped it off with a one-yard run by Brent Ripley. And they now lead it by a count of 20 to 2. Leeson wants to run on first down. He is hit hard after a gain of one and a half yards, but he's a tough competitor and he's like a battling top right up again. Well, Darrell Leeson certainly is actually qu quite a bit stronger than what he looks when you when you see him in person. He actually looks a bit frail, but shake his hand and you see he's got big, strong hands on him, and uh, he's actually a very powerful man. Six foot uh, three and weighs about 205 pounds, so he's actually very strong for his size. Brian McChrystal says he's one of the most competitive players he's ever had, and wow, that's saying a lot. The attempted pass was for Sean Harvey. He wasn't even looking for the football. Well, the Hamilton Hurricanes coming on a blitz, and uh, Daryl Leeson picked it up, but unfortunately, Sean Harvey did not. He's supposed to look for that ball immediately coming from a slot back position. Fortunately, he did not read that blitz. Daryl Leeson threw the ball, and it just fell in behind him, so. Regina Rams after 1-2, they're going to have to punt the ball back to the Hurricanes here with 2.25 remaining in the third quarter. After a good start to this football game, Paul, Matt Kellett has had his troubles here for the last couple of quarters. They need a big punt from him right now. Well, exactly. He's just got to relax out there. Obviously a big game, and kickers are subjected to those nerves. We'll see what he does here. Kellett gets away a nice one, high and deep that chases Andrew Wells back to his own 45. Wells trying to look for some running room. Brings it into Ram territory, down at about the 45-yard line. Lloyd McDonald is in there, and a few others. Looks like Moore down there to make a tackle as well. Well, the Regina Rams did not want to punt the ball to Andrew Wells, and you can see why. He's very quick individual out there, just able to find a little hole in that Ram coverage and dart through there. Certainly the game plan was to kick it away from him or kick it out of bounds, but this time Andrew Wells was able to grab it and does a good job of bringing it back to the 46-yard line of the Regina Rams. It is first and 10 for the Hurricanes from the Rams, 45. A little bit of trouble there for the Hurricanes as well. A little trouble with the communication. Hayes kept the ball and had a gain of about three yards. Let's go down to Barry on the sidelines. Thanks, Ron. With me is uh, Ram President Bob Pelton. Uh, Mr. President, it must be nice. Uh, you're up about 20 to 2. Lots of time left, though. Everybody be pleased with the way the defense playing. Our defense is holding, in a, holding us in there right now. A uh, couple more minutes go off the clock, and we'll start to feel better. Uh, thanks. It's uh, Yeah, there's over 114 left in the uh, third quarter. Up to you, Ron. Thanks so much, Barry. Tell Bob to behave himself. We know he can get himself into trouble now and again. Tell him to calm down, too. <laughs> On second and seven, Hayes wants to pass, runs into his own man. It is complete, though, for a first down. Still going along the sidelines was number five, Ron Lorette. The Hurricanes are on the move. They should have it first and 10 at about the Rams' 24-yard line. Well, Jason Hayes that time just standing in the pocket, and actually the running back, Dan McAlonan, is banging into him. But being the big, strong quarterback he is, he's able to stand in there, find Lorette down the sidelines for a big first down. So the Hurricanes have it again at the Ram 19-yard line. 50 seconds left in the, here in the third quarter. They absolutely have to put some points on the board on this drive. Hayes looking over that Rams defense, which has played outstanding. Here comes the blitz, and he is all down by Randy Srochinski. A big, big play by the Rams defense, and we do have a 
Kleenex. No, it's a flag down on the sidelines. Well, we're going to wait for the call. It's going to be procedure against the Hamilton Hurricanes, recognizing that that blitz was coming from the Regina Rams, just jumping a bit on the line of scrimmage there. And again, some big heat provided by those linebackers. So the Regina procedure. Rams, when they get backed up Hamilton. in their own end of the field, no electing to Second go with some decline. pressure on Jason Second Hayes down. to see if they can disrupt that great passing attack of the Hurricanes. And obviously it's worked here this afternoon. And they will take the penalty, pushing the Hurricanes back another five yards. Did they decline the penalty? I thought they had them back a little further than that. Okay, second and 15. Now for the Hurricanes. Hayes drops back to pass. Here comes the pressure once again. Gets it away, has the screen set up for McElodin. Still going across the 20. And he will be awfully close to a first down. I don't think he'll have it, but he'll be about a yard short. They will certainly have to go for it here. Well, a good play that time by the uh, Hamilton Hurricanes. Jason Hayes just dropping back and throwing a little screen pass to Dan McElonen. Does a good job of eluding Jeff Haggerty on that particular play. He was out there, had an initial shot at him. Puts his head down, and he's showing some remarkable strength here this afternoon as well. Uh, able to get square to that line of scrimmage and get upfield and show some pretty good power. We got one time for one last play here in the third quarter. The Rams lead it 20 to 2. Folks, this is the first time Regina and Hamilton have battled for the Canadian Bowl. But before 1988, when they played for the Armadale Cup, Regina and Hamilton crossed paths four times. Regina won it in 81, 80, 76, and in 75. And in 1972, when they played for the Leader Post Trophy, Hamilton won that one 33 to 8 in Saskatoon. So this is the sixth meeting for the Canadian Championship between these two. Hamilton has won once. Well, the Regina Rams always have difficulty up in Saskatoon, and it was one of those years where there was a neutral site for the uh, Canadian, where for the national championship, and Regina Rams forced the journey up to Saskatoon and uh, came up a little bit short that day, but Regina Rams full marks here this afternoon right now, enjoying a 20-2 lead with two seconds remaining in the third quarter. This should be the final play of the third quarter, third and two, big play for both sides of the football. Well, let's start talking a little bit about Randy Sorchinski here. Came up with a big interception that led to that Ram touchdown earlier on in the third quarter and now comes up with a great third down play for the Regina Rams, stopping McElhone and Short. The score is the Regina Rams 20, the Hamilton Hurricanes 2, and this is the Canadian Junior Football Championship. You're listening to Rams Football. at the end of the third quarter, 20 to two for the Regina Rams over the Hamilton Hurricanes here in the 1993 Canadian Bowl and 15 more minutes of exciting action-packed football to come. Throughout the program, the junior football in Saskatchewan has always been a big part of the Saskatchewan Rough Rider Football Club. Uh, currently, there's six players playing uh, that has had junior experience throughout uh, their careers. We got David Pitcher, with Dan Payne, Ray Algard, one of the best players in the Canadian Football League, had played some time with Vancouver Marilomas. And we have Tom McCallum, a young kid that was just there with the uh, Rams last year. Uh, he's playing the offensive guard, back up with the, with the Riders. I know there's a Hamilton Hurricane, Dale Sanderson, playing uh, with Hamilton. So uh, there's a lot of experience of the junior football players in Canada and the CFL. middle, Darrell Leeson hit Bob Aldrich, a gain of 49 yards. We do have a flag on the play. It is going against the Hurricanes. The play will stand. Bob Aldrich, another one of these young fellas that is graduating from the Regina Rams this year. Paul, probably playing in his final game. And wow, what a big play for him. Well, no question, a big play and a big play for the Regina Rams. Bob Aldrich, again, one of the 22-year-olds. You look for big things from your 22-year-olds. And Bob Aldridge, from his fullback position, delivered on that play. 49-yard gain down to the 42-yard line of the Hamilton Hurricanes. And a great run after he caught the football by Bob Aldridge. First and 10, Leeson, the pressure is on. And 
and he attempted the pass for Corey Borsa. <laughs> well, Corey Borsa used to be a tight end. <laughs> they converted him to offensive tackle this year, and he stuck his hand up for a minute. I thought he was going to try to grab it, but wisely pulled it back down. That'll be an incomplete pass for the Regina Rams, and saves them a bit of yardage as the Hamilton Hurricane defense was coming very hard on Darrell Lee in that time, so they'll go again from the 42-yard line, second and 10. Again, I want to mention that Rams offensive line patchwork all season long. Credit Jerry Orban for doing a remarkable job with these guys. Trouble with injuries, but they have looked awfully good again this afternoon. They give us the Ripplinger on the counter play and give him a gain of seven yards, maybe eight. It'll be second and two for the Rams from the uh, Hurricanes 34 yard line make it. Well now the Regina Rams are having a big huddle on the sidelines third down about three yards to go you're down to the 36 yard line of the Hurricanes trying to decide whether they should be going for the field goal or whether they just let Matt Kellett punt it away or maybe even gamble. Now I don't see Matt Kellett on the field. Yeah, he's out there now. He's oh, walking he? around. All right, I see him. He does have his field goal tee with him, so the Regina Rams will be trying a 42-yard field goal. I believe Kellett now one for four on the afternoon. This one coming from the 43. It is the fake. Ripplinger, quarterback in high school, gets the win for Bob Aldrich, but it is not away. Well, he threw the ball a little bit behind Bob Aldridge. He had to go a turn around, actually, and a big hit put on by the uh, Hamilton Hurricane defense that time. The ball floated up there a little bit. Bob Aldridge tries to go up and make a good grab, but Hurricane defense equal to the task. So good call by the Regina Rams that time, obviously thinking a little bit too far for Matt Kellett to reach with a field goal attempt. They try to make a big play, but unfortunately for them, it falls for an incompletion. You have to think, Paul, the Hurricanes must get something going here awfully soon or it will be too little too late. Jason Hayes, the top quarterback in all of Canadian junior football. If there is a man to do it, he can. Drops back to pass, has all kinds of time, all day long. has been working with Danny Paskew all year long to try to get him to do that. He picked the right time to let go with the hardest shot that he has all season long. And I'm telling you what, Andrew Wells can still hear it. <laughs> what a hit that was. Boy, that'll get your attention in a hurry. Sure wakes up the fans too. <laughs> Beautiful, I love it. Old time football. 12 minutes, 25 seconds left to go, second and 10. Hayes wants to pass again. Attempted on the sidelines for Lorette. And another great defensive play by Jeff Hadley to knock the football away. It will be third and long for the Hamilton Hurricanes. They will have to punt away the football once more. Well, the Regina Ram defense has played tough all year long, and this is no exception. Even with a 20-2 lead with 12 minutes and 20 seconds left, they come up with probably their toughest defensive stand of the year. Danny Paskew leading the charge with a big hit over the middle on Andrew Wells. Some great coverage provided by Derek Fink. Taking away that momentum from the Hamilton Hurricanes, they're going to have to punt the ball back to the Rams. That's a crash of the night if I've ever seen one. Ooh, you got to get that one on the show. <laughs> It'll be on Monday night on Sportsline. You better believe it. 12 minutes left to go in this football game, folks. It has been a dandy. Len Watkins on to punt. From his own 20-yard line, Ball and Ripplinger standing back at about their own 45. It is Ripplinger, makes a move at the 50 across midfield, and is brought down at about the 54-yard line. 11 minutes, 45 seconds left to go in the fourth and final quarter. It is the Rams 20, the Hurricanes 2. You are listening to Rams football on 980. Well, welcome back to the sidelines. With me now is another co-captain, the Regina Rams, CFL veteran, uh, Bob Poley. Bob, uh, your comments on today's game. 
excellent game so far. It's just been great. Uh, the Rams are playing outstanding. It's uh, pretty close to the end of the fourth, and uh, they're 11 minutes from a championship. Now, you played in a few championships yourself. Any fond memories of the championships you played with the Rams? Well, I think the one that really comes back is in 1976. We played at home here, and that's when old Taylor Field here had grass on him. We, I think we played the Hamilton Hurricanes that time, and we were trailing in the third quarter, but we come on with 20 big points in the fourth and, uh, and won it. And, that brings fond memories back on the 1976 championship. Well, you know, you've played 15 years in the CFL with a lot of junior football graduates. Uh, this is a great program here in Regina. I know in Hamilton's had a great program for many years. Well, you bet. You know, they've been going at her for a number of years now, and I was just reading in the paper. It's been a lot. And, and Regina, Saskatchewan's been uh, on top of most of them. And, you know, it's, that's what it's all about. It's football Saskatchewan right on the old hat here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, can we get a great cup prediction uh, possibly uh, for uh, the end of November here? Well, myself and Roger are going to get them together tomorrow, and uh, it's going to be BC over Calgary and Saskatchewan over Edmonton, and uh, we're going to host the Western Final here. And maybe the Hamilton Ticats will be back there. It'll be a remake of 89 in Calgary. Well, if that, that'll be fine, too, and then uh, Saskatchewan can win it all, and uh, we'll all go way happy. Well, that's just Danny. Now, what's a retired CFL football player do uh, now that you're done? Well, I'm with Ducks Unlimited now and uh, doing a little fundraising. And uh, I was at a banquet last night, in fact, and uh, it's going pretty well for me. That's great. Thanks. Bob Poley, longtime CFL veteran with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He also played with the Calgary Stampeders, uh, graduate of the Regina Rams. Uh, played a lot, huh? <laughs> Maybe too much. Too much, huh? <laughs> Well, we got 11 minutes left. 20 to 2 here. The Regina Rams leading the uh, Hamilton Hurricanes in 1993 Canadian Bowl. Back there and pick it up again. That little quick hitch pass that Daryl Eason's tried to throw here this afternoon. And I'm not sure I'd be coming back to that baby. That one's been a little bit dicey all afternoon long. Second and 17 now for the Regina Rams. Looks like they will pass again. Leeson looking downfield has a man open. It's Josh. Another big, big play for the Rams offense. Well, again, Josh Shaw just running from his wideout position down the near sidelines here. Darrell Leeson stepping back, waiting a couple of seconds, and then lofting the ball high in the air. Gets it over top of the Hamilton Hurricane defenders. Great job by Josh Shaw. Big first down, moves it into the 31-yard line of the Hurricanes. Rams are on the move with a first down from there. Aldrich and Bernard are the running backs. Harvey and Rippling are the slots. Fork and Ball are the wide receivers. On first and 10, Leeson, the pitch to Bernard. Finds the going tough, but still has a gain of, well, he got maybe one or two yards. A late hit, but no flags down. Well, again, the Regina Rams now are going to start to make sure that they just wind this clock down. We see that big middle linebacker for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Nick Messick seems to be on the limp a little bit, and he certainly has been the heart and soul of their defense today. Darrell Leeson now 23 of 34 for 414 yards. What an afternoon he's had. Mr. and Mrs. Leeson, how do you like that one? Oof. Your son has had himself quite an afternoon. You have lots to be proud of. He is a great young man and a great athlete. On second and nine, Leeson drops back to pass. And it is picked off, and there's a lot of running room to go here. We have a fight going down on the field. Leeson chasing him down and forcing him out of bounds. It was picked off by number 30, Christopher Arnold. And a big turnover for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Wow. All of a sudden, they're right back in this football game. Well, they've had a couple of opportunities here this afternoon with some big plays. That time, an interception thrown by Darrell Eason over on the far side of the field. Just trying to get that ball out in the flat to uh, Josh Shaw. Didn't have enough mustard on it, though, and a good return by the Hamilton Hurricanes, although Darrell Eason showing some good speed and determination as the quarterback just runs that Hurricane down and bumps him out of bounds. Jason Hayes in at quarterback. First and 10 for the Hurricanes from their own 30 or from the Rams 30 yard line. Hayes looking for the end zone, the quick strike. Yeah. It is caught for the touchdown by Andrew Wells. Tell you what, the Hurricanes are right back in this football game. The point after attempt is coming up, but right now it's 20 to eight for the Rams. A big play and a quick hitter for the Hurricanes and Jason Hayes and Andrew Wells. Well, that's the combination that has done very well for the Hamilton Hurricanes all year long. A big receiver, Andrew Wells, who took a big shot earlier on. 
but he comes back with his own big shot here against the Regina Rams and that's the thing about the Hurricanes they have that quick strike offense and certainly when you're playing a team like that you can never take anything for granted and they are going for two here instead of the single Hayes puts it up in the end zone and it's knocked away another nice defensive play by the old Canadian Todd Fuchs. Well, that actually is a big play, too, as well for the Regina Rams as the Hamilton Hurricanes, had they completed that two-point convert, would have closed within 10 points of the Regina Rams. That's a touchdown and a field goal with 9 minutes and 14 seconds. Obviously a very big play for the Rams, knocking it down and keeping the score at 20-8. to eight. Len Watkins will come onto the field to handle the kickoff duties. For the Hamilton Hurricanes, back to receive, we have Mark Bernard and Michael Rutt. Well, you look for the Hamilton Hurricanes to try the short kickoff here. Actually, it's something that they've employed in films that the Regina Rams have been watching for uh, quite successfully, actually, all year long. So looks like the Hamilton Hurricanes are going to try that short kickoff and see if they can keep this momentum going here. 9-14 remaining to be played here in the Canadian Championship. The Hurricanes have suddenly come alive. I think it's safe to say that Watkins is trying the short kick here. He placed the football down as pretty as you can say, and it looks like he is definitely... Nope, he's going to kick it long. And puts it out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. You know what? He's going to have to do it all over again. Yeah, I don't know exactly what they were trying there. They have used that short kickoff a lot in the regular season when they've been playing other teams. When they actually just score touchdowns, they seem to go. And they must obviously have a great deal of confidence in their defense in order to be able to do that. But electing to just boot it downfield. And fortunately for the Hurricanes, it goes out of bounds at the ramp. 28-yard line, it looks like they're going to make the final Final spot, so the Rams will come back on offense now, first and 10 from there. First down. Rams head coach Frank McChrystal playing in his 10th Canadian Championship. Paul, he's been to four as a player. He's been to three as an assistant coach, and this is his third as a head coach of the Regina Rams. What a career it has been for Mr. Frank McChrystal. First and 10, nine minutes left to go for the Rams from their own 27 yard line. The give is to Bernard, fighting hard, fumbles the football. And my goodness, the Hamilton Hurricanes will take over deep inside of Rams territory at about the 30 yard line. Wow. Well, that's something very unusual from Mark Bernard as well as he does not fumble very often. And Good hit put on by the Hamilton Hurricanes as he tried to cut back against the flow over the middle. Good shot put on him by the Hamilton Hurricane defense and ball pops up into one of their defenders' arms and they're back on the field again. Look for that quick strike play again from the Hurricanes. Jason Hayes, first and 10 from his own 30. No doubt he wants to pass the screen for McCallanen and he has some running room, cuts it back inside, will have the first down, is down inside the 15 to about the 13 yard line. Well, Hamilton Hurricanes are really making a game of this right now. A little screen pass that time. Jason Hayes rolling to his left, pulls up, and then throws it over top of the head of the onrushing Regina Rand defenders. And Dan McAloan does the rest, putting his head down and driving down to the 12-yard line. 8.29 remaining in the ball game here. Rams up 20 to 8. Hurricanes have the ball on the Ram 12-yard line. Tell you what, if the Hurricanes can put another seven on the board here, we will have a brand new football game. First and 10 for the Hurricanes from the Rams, 13. Here comes the rush, and brought down in the backfield is Jason Hayes by a slew of Ram tacklers. All kinds of guys in there to make the tackle. Jamie Zalewski was in there, Stacioson was in there, even Jeff Haggerty from his halfback position. Well, that's a big play for the Regina Ram defense again, getting backed up in their own end, and Alex Smith deciding to send some heat on the quarterback, Jason Hayes. He comes with an all-out full blitz by everybody defensive backs the Hamilton Hurricanes don't send out many receivers so you can get away with that a little bit on them but big play coming up here now second and 15 from the uh, Regina Round 16 yard line Hayes wants to pass looking to the end zone it is incomplete attempted for number two Rob Gray and we have a few extracurricular things going on on the field right now Big Steve Yuren crashing in there from his defensive tackle position. Gets some good heat on Jason Hayes. And we've got a flag, a very late flag coming out now. It's the Regina Rams and Hamilton Hurricanes are doing a lot of talking. The pass was incomplete by Jason Hayes. 
So that's going to put them into a third down situation. We'll have to wait and see what the call is here by the officials. But obviously a big play for the Regina Rams puts the Hurricanes in a third down situation. And we'll have to wait and see if they're going to gamble on this third down play. The call went against the Hurricanes. That will move the ball back even further. For the Rams, it looks like they might decide to decline this penalty and keep it at third and 15. Oh, they're moving it back. <laughs> well, we're going to get an objectionable conduct penalty against the Hamilton Hurricanes. Obviously a very poor time to take that particular penalty and just take a quick look at the penalty situation here of the Hamilton Hurricanes now who have uh, taken seven penalties, pardon me, eight penalties for a total of uh, 65 yards and the Regina Rams have taken seven for 65 yards as well, so pretty even in that department. Look for the fake here again. Jason Hayes is the holder for Len Watkins' field goal attempt, which will come from about the 34-yard line, but I would hazard a guess that he's not going to be kicking any field goals here. Yeah, they're putting it down. He tries it. It is up, and it is good. This time, tack another three on the board for the Hamilton Hurricanes. That'll make the score. The Rams 20, the Hurricanes 11. Seven minutes, seven seconds left to go in the ball game. You are listening to Rams football on 980 CKR. Joining me on the sidelines right now, uh, an old friend from the CFL days, uh, Larry Robertson. Larry, you're with the marketing community of the OFC. Uh, how do you see the game so far? It's been a terrific contest. I think it's better than anybody really expected. It's hard to know. You never know what one team is going to do against the other. There's been times in the past where they've been blowouts, and this is a fine ball game. Well, you've watched uh, Hamilton throughout the year, and you've seen what Jason Hayes can do, and uh, lots of time left on the clock, yet he's an outstanding athlete. That's true. He passed this past year for 32 touchdowns and set an OFC record in the games where they've beaten teams 68 to nothing. Yeah, and it's uh, he's a big kid at about 6'4", 230. I mean, he, he's got CFL size. I think he could do well in that league. And now that teams like Hamilton are giving chances to Canadian quarterbacks like Bob Torrance, there's a lot of chance for people like him. Well, I know we were talking before the game about uh, how many championships it's been. It's been like the 69th championship here today for the Canadian Bowl, and uh, and you've seen quite a few of them. Well, <laughs> <laughs> not all 69. No, that's for sure. I've seen a, a few of them over the years. I saw the game last year in the snow in Ottawa, and it was as good as this one here today. Yeah, it's a, it's a great caliber of football. Very, you know, the only time the two the conferences get together is at the Canadian Bowl. It's too bad they can't have more interlocking. Well, I think that'll come in time, and it's, it's a league that a lot of people don't know about. And when you figure there's 25 teams, 40 players on a team, and a 1,000 playing in Canada. Thanks, Larry. Back up to Ron uh, for the play-by-play. -play. Hamilton Hurricanes D-line, George Hughes, Ben Peternell, J.J. Nunn, and Roger Dunbrack did a good job to keep Bernard to a gain of one yard that time. Well, absolutely nothing doing in the running department for the Regina Rams here this afternoon. Mark Bernard now with seven carries for 26 yards, so that Hamilton Hurricane defense done a good job of taking away the run, forced the Rams to the pass here this afternoon. Second and nine, Leaston on the draw play, has all kinds of room, he is tucked down at the 50 yard line. It'll be a Rams first down. Well, that's the other thing that Daryl Leeson can do, and when the going really gets tough, we've seen him do it against the Saskatoon Hilltops in a close ball game. He's going to tuck that ball under his arm and take off. Does a good job of just stepping back on that quarterback draw and then getting ahead for a big pickup out to the 50-yard line. That's going to keep the clock running for the Regina Rams, and obviously they want to start to grind that down now and get out of this park with a big win. Six minutes and five seconds left to go in this ball game. 22-11. The Rams lead it. The give is to the big fullback. I believe that was Jamie Bailey. The going is tough once again. Give him a gain of one yard. Well, again, the Hamilton Hurricane defense coming up very big, just refusing to fold here in the fourth quarter. They've done a good job of hanging in with the Regina Rams. It looked like they were out of the ball game at 20 to two, but a big interception by the Hamilton Hurricanes and that quick strike to Andrew Wells has scrambled them right back in there. They follow that up with a field goal. Tightened her up here to 20 to 11 now with five minutes and 32 seconds remaining to be played here in the fourth quarter. It is second and nine for the Rams. Big play coming up right here. 
Bernard and Aldrich are the running backs. They fake the give to Bernard. Leeson rolling out to his left. Here comes a rush. Gets it away on the sidelines for Ripplinger. Another first down for the Regina Rams. Down to the 42-yard line of the Hamilton Hurricanes. Well, Darrell Leeson did a good job that time of just standing in there. Rolled a little bit to his left, but he got hit with a tremendous shot just as he let that ball go. Great catch by Brent Ripplinger stepping out of bounds. Moves the ball down to the 42 three-yard line of the Hurricanes, so a very important offensive drive here for the Regina Rams. Number 65, Jason McLeod coming into the ball game for the Hamilton Hurricanes at one of the tackle positions. On first and ten, Leeson gives to Bernard, trying to set up the blocking. One guy tries to bring him down behind the line of scrimmage, and he is finally forced out of bounds at the 43, and it'll actually be a loss of maybe two yards for the Regina Rams. Well, you got to have full marks to the Hamilton Hurricane defense here, just not giving up anything on first down. The Regina Rams have been able to convert two long second down situations here to keep this drive alive, but again, a great job by that Hurricane defense holding Mark Bernard to a, well, yeah, a yard and a half loss in the play, moves the ball back to the 44-yard line of the Hurricanes. Rams will go from there now, second and about 12. Four minutes and 40 seconds left to go in this, the Canadian Junior Football Championship. The Rams lead it 20 to 11, second and 11. They try and set up the screen for Bernard, has some good blocking. He will get to the outside. Has another Rams first down inside the 30, down at about the 28-yard line. Another big, big play by Daryl Leeson, Mark Bernard, and the Regina Rams. Well, Mark Bernard, you can hold him down for so long, but give him a little bit of running room. He just manages to catch that screen pass, get going upfield, and you could almost see him look out of the corner of his eye at where that first down marker was. He just simply turned upfield, put his head down, crashed into one of the Hurricane defenders, made sure he had enough for the first down, moves it into the 29-yard line of the Hurricanes. Very impressive drive by the Rams here with 4.15 remaining to be played in the game. First and 10, Regina from the Hamilton. 28th to give us to Bernard on the pitch. Still going, tries to get to the outside, is finally hauled down after a gain of make it four yards. Well, again, another hard-hitting play by Mark Bernard, just scrambling over that left side of that offensive line of the Regina Rams. Bob Aldridge, the big fullback out in front of him, gets a good block for him. Mark Bernard turns upfield. Moves it down inside the 25-yard line of the Hurricanes. The Rams now looking at second and six from there. 3.39 left to play in the game. Doing one heck of a job right here, Paul, and taking all kinds of time off the clock. It's more important to do that at this point in the ball game than maybe put points up on the board, but it looks like they might have a chance to do that as well. On second and five, Leeson rolls out to his right. Has some time and attempts the pass there for Harvey, but it was incomplete. Well, that's going to stall the drive, but actually a very good offensive drive. Burned off a lot of time on the clock, and now Matt Kellett is going to come onto the field, and he'll be attempting the most important field goal that he's kicked all year long. Regina Rams up by nine points. They'd certainly like to stretch it out to 12. It has not been the best of afternoons for Matt Kellett so far. One for five in the field goal department. But if he can get this one, he'll be a very happy young man. Give the Rams a 12-point lead from the 32. It's up, and it is good! Matt Kellett gives the Rams a 12-point lead, and it is the Rams 23, the Hamilton Hurricanes 11, with exactly three minutes to go. You are listening to Regina Rams Football on 980 CKR. Well, we got three minutes left in the uh, 1993 Canadian Bowl, and uh, I'm sitting up here in the great crowd here at Taylor Field. We can all hear them. I know the Regina Rams like to thank some of their sponsors today. Mr. Luke, Furman's Meats, 980C KRM, Molson's, the Victoria Club, Gino's Pizza and Pasta, Canada Safeway, Saskatchewan Lotteries, Barker's Trophies. Uh, the, the list goes on, and that's why uh, they're so successful. They have so many people in the community to support the Regina Rams. As like with the Hamilton Hurricanes, they have a complete list of sponsors that they'd like to thank. 
Uh, today, the, uh, we'd like to thank uh, Norbert Thurmeyer and Don McDougall. They were the uh, co-chairman of the 1993 Canadian Bowl festivities. And uh, special thanks to Regina Inn, Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and Cable Regina. Are you guys enjoying the game today? Real good. Real good game. My fourth Little Grey Cup I've been to. Fourth Little Grey Cup, yeah. Where are you, where are you from? Moose Jaw. From Moose Jaw. And, and Regina Rams have a lot of players from Moose Jaw. How are you enjoying the game today? Oh, just great. <laughs> just a wonderful game. Yep. Well, we got three minutes left, and we've seen lots of exciting games from... Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Exactly, with the Rough Riders. We've got three minutes left. We all know the excitement of a game here in Canada. <laughs> all right, we've got three minutes left in the Canadian... Uh, 1993 Canadian Bowl here, emblematic of football supremacy in the Canadian Junior Football League. And we'll be back with the last three minutes in a few seconds here. Not sure what happened there. The Rams on the kickoff after the <laughs> field goal attempt by Matt Kellett. I don't know if they attempted a short one, but it only went short. 69 for the Hamilton Hurricanes. Brian Walker on the return. It looked like everybody just stood there for a little while. They didn't know what was going on either. Nobody seemed too anxious to get going here on either team. I'm not sure exactly what transpired, but I do know this. The Hamilton Hurricanes have the ball at the 40-yard line. The Regina Rams are very concerned about something down there. Talking to the official right now, but doesn't seem to be having any effect. The Hamilton Hurricanes come out on offense here. 254 remaining in the ball game. They've got some time, but they're going to have to put a quick touchdown up on the board. We have flags down on the field. On first and 10, Hayes just throws it out of bounds. I think we're going to get an offside call against the Regina Rams here, but that maybe they were induced offside and a little bit of illegal procedure, but nope, the official says no way. It's going to be offside Regina Rams. That'll give the Hamilton Hurricanes five additional yards. They'll move out to their own 45-yard line now. They'll Regina go from there first and five, 250 remaining to be played. Down. Jason Hay is going from the hurry up offense with two minutes, 50 seconds left to go. His Hurricanes trail by 12 on first and five. The snap is high, Hayes wants to pass. It is complete to Wells and that'll be a Hurricanes first down at about their own 52 yard line. Well, Andrew Wells just darting out from his wide receiver position gets down the field about seven yards, a quick pass by Jason Hayes. He hauls it in, that's enough to move the chains as they're out to the 52 yard line. Rams will be content to let them have those little seven yard passes at this stage of the ball game. The Rams in their prevent defense at this point. Again, Hayes wants to pass, tries to get it up there for McCallanen, and we do have a flag down on the play. It was an incompleted pass, a flag back in the backfield. Looks like somebody's going to get an objectionable conduct here. I think it might be on the quarterback, Jason Hayes, actually, after the play was over. He seemed to give Steve Yurin a shot, and Fisher was right on the spot and called him for objectionable conduct, so he marched that off against the Hamilton Hurricanes. And Certainly has to keep his composure at this stage of the ball game with two, two minutes and 37 seconds left to play and his team trails by 12. They'll make it second and 20 for the Hamilton Hurricanes and they have now called a timeout and so will we. You are listening to Regina Rams Football. Dave Ellis, we've got Barry Tamman down on the sidelines. Two minutes, 29 seconds left to go here in the ball game. 
The Rams lead the Hamilton Hurricanes 23 to 11 in this, the Canadian Junior Football Championship for the Canadian Bowl and Canadian Junior Football Supremacy. Yep, big afternoon here for both teams and so far the Regina Rams are out in front of the Hamilton Hurricanes 23 to 11, but watch out for that quick strike offense of that Hamilton Hurricanes. They came back once, can they do it again? Third and 12 and they're going for it. The pitches to McAlonan tries to pass. And it is down away. Are we gonna have an interference call here or what is the deal? It was a jump ball, about five or six guys on both teams went up for it. And let's see what the call is. Well, it's gonna be called interference. Now it's just a question of who it's gonna be called interference on. Officials back in talking to the referee. We're gonna get pass interference against the Regina Rams. That's a big play for the Hurricanes, 221, and they're gonna keep this drive alive. It looked like the Regina Rams had them stopped, but they're gonna have the ball now down at the Regina Rams 46 yard line. Two minutes Regina and 21 29. seconds left to be played here. Rams enjoying a 12 point lead. How can you call that when six guys jump up for a football? That is absolutely ridiculous. Two minutes, 21 seconds left to go. First and 10 for the Hamilton Hurricanes from the Ram 46 yard line. Hayes gives to the fullback Fulton. He inches his way forward and he'll have a nice gain of about eight yards on first down. Well, just again, going with a running play and very strange call actually by the Hamilton Hurricanes here. Is this gonna keep the clock running now as soon as the referee gets the ball set? The clock is gonna start again with two minutes and 15 seconds and trailing by 12. You would expect Jason Hayes to be really airing the ball out. They get second and three for the Hurricanes. Time now becoming a factor for them. Two minutes, 10 seconds left to go from the shotgun. Hayes going for it all, looking to the end zone. Think behind the coverage, and he comes up with the interception. He'll bring it out of the end zone to the 10. He's out to the 15, and is finally brought down at the 22-yard line. Say goodnight to the Hamilton Hurricanes. A big, big play by Derek Fink and the Rams will take over at their own 22. Well, a big play by Derek Fink with some excellent coverage on Andrew Wells that time, streaking down that far sideline. Jason Hayes wants to put that ball up in the air and see if he can just run by Derek Fink, but nothing doing. The Regina Rams come up with a big interception. They take over the ball now. 23, 23 yard line, one minute and 55 seconds to be played here in the Canadian Championship. Put my hat on, I was, I was gone for a moment. <laughs> the Rams will take over at their own 22 yard line. One minute, 55 seconds left to go in this ball game. Leeson keeps it himself and goes on the draw play. Give him a gain of seven yards. It'll be second and three for the Regina Rams. Well, Darrell Leeson again, just showing some good power. He's not electing to hand off or do anything to, to risk another turnover. The Regina Rams had five fumbles here this afternoon and some of those proved costly, but when the going got tough on the last offensive series, the Regina Rams were able to put together a very long drive, came up with an important field goal by Matt Kellett. Now they're just gonna hang on to that ball and grind this clock down here, a minute 41 remaining to be played, and it's running. Make it second and one for the Rams. Aldrich and Bernard are the running backs. Leeson, the pitch to Bernard. He will have another Rams first down across the 35. Well, he's down at the 35 yard line. Doesn't matter though, the clock will keep running and the Rams will have another first down and keep the football. Well, they're out to the 35 yard line. They had 11 wins and no losses coming into this ball game. It looks like they're going up to 12 wins and no losses. Another perfect season for the Regina Rams. No marks in the loss column, so just an outstanding effort here for the 93 football season. And let's credit everybody on that Rams organization, the head coach, Frank McChrystal, all the board of directors, 
people like Ed Bankowski, yourself, Doug McKillop, the list goes on and on. A little miscommunication there by the Rams, but uh, you can excuse the boys for being a little excited at this point, I would say. Well, I think they're probably thinking ahead a little bit here to the post-game party, but with a minute four left, you want to make sure you don't turn the ball over. Darrell Leeson wisely held on to it when he crashed into the big fullback, Bob Aldridge. Held on to it, went down about the 33-yard line, so that's going to be a loss of two on the play. Rams will go second and 12 from their own 33-yard line. And let us give some credit to the Hamilton Hurricanes, Paul. They definitely gave the Rams their biggest challenge of the season. Well, no question about that, and they hung right in there. The thing that you got to like about the Hamilton Hurricanes is that when they did have an opportunity to score here late in the fourth quarter, they put some points on the board and really made a tight game out of it. On second and 12, Aldrich fumbled the football, and lucky for him, he got the Argo bounce, and it bounced right back into his hands. Well, that's the only thing the Regina Rams have to worry about right now is turning the ball over, and Bob Aldridge falls on it, covers it, so it'll be third down. That'll bring Matt Kellett onto the field, but there's only 40 seconds remaining to be played here in this Canadian Championship game. Hurricanes trail by 12. They'd have to put two touchdowns up on the board to come back in this game, and with 40 seconds left, their chances are pretty slim. You never know, though. Stranger things have happened. Well, if something that strange happens, I'll probably be jumping out of this booth, so. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't want you to do that, Paul. We wouldn't want you to hurt that pretty little face of yours. <laughs> 30 seconds, the clock is running down to 25. That's how long it will be until the Rams are crowned 1993 Canadian Junior Champions. They let the uh, 22nd clock run down and Matt Kellett will move back another few yards to punt this football. And who knows, he might even do it again. He might even go back into the end zone for a safety. Now well, he got to run around for 19 seconds. And I know that's pretty tough for a kicker to do that. You notice the boys on the uh, sidelines grabbing the old Gatorade bucket and they're about to get Mr. Frank McCusco. Yes. The Golden Scout. I'm sure Frank's a little cool right now but I'm sure he won't mind in the least. Long snap for Kellett. Still manages to do a great job to get the ball away and puts it out of bounds at about his own where are they marking this one? 49-yard line. Kellett was under pressure, but still managed to get the football away. The fans here at Taylor Field are going nuts because they know who is going to be the 1993 Canadian Junior Football Champions. That will be the Regina Rams now 12 seconds away from being crowned the champs. Well, just an outstanding afternoon of football here and a great performance by two teams. The Regina Rams coming up with a 12-point victory here this afternoon and outstanding. I'm sure that everybody that was in attendance here enjoyed it and uh, certainly better save those tickets. They're going to make great souvenirs. On first down, we now have a new quarterback in there for the Hamilton Hurricanes. That is Todd Dacyuk getting a little taste of Canadian championship action but on first and ten attempted the pass and it was incomplete well again an outstanding job by middle linebacker Randy Sorchinski just dropping off in that hook zone quarterback tried to get the ball in there Randy Sorchinski steps in front of the intended receiver knocks it down he's had a whale of an afternoon here on defense himself on second and ten with eight seconds to go the snap is high for Dacyuk chases way back to his own 40-yard line Gets it away for Andrew Wells, who does a good job to come back to the football, but that is it! The game is over! And you can say the Rams of the 1993 Canadian Junior Football Champions, they are the champs of Canada for the first time since 1987. They knock off the Hamilton Hurricanes 23 to 11 in this Canadian Bowl. What a game it was! of excitement, credit all kinds of people, including the Rams defense, Daryl Leeson, Randy Srochinski, two of those guys had big games, they all had big games, the main thing is the Rams now a perfect 
12 and 0 on the season. And what a party it is going to be for the Regina Rams tonight. They are the Canadian Junior Football League champions. They knock off the Hamilton Hurricanes 23 to 11. We will be back with some post-game comments. Hopefully, we'll be able to head down to the field with Barry Tammon with a free post-game interview. Stand by. You are listening to Rams football on 980 CKRM. The Regina Rams, winners of the 1993 Canadian Bowl here. 23, 11 victors over the Hamilton Hurricanes of the OFC. Right now, the players are out there shaking hands. We'll be underway with the closing ceremonies right away with the presentations of the most valuable player trophies along with the Canadian ball to the Regina Ram, Captain of the Regina Rams. Just an outstanding afternoon of football here. And I know there's a lot of people to thank uh, Norbert Thurmeyer and Don McDougall on behalf of the Regina Rams. co chairman of the Canadian Ball Festival did an outstanding job of, of putting this all together. And I know uh, there's a lot of volunteers and directors of the Rams that had to look after this. It's just been great. I think as you can tell by the fans here, we had a great crowd. Uh, great game. We've seen two excellent uh, athletes, uh, quarterbacks, uh, Jason Hayes and Daryl Lee, that just put on fantastic performances along with some great defensive plays. And uh, You can't say much more than that. The 1993 Canadian Bowl champions, the Regina Rams. I think we'll go upstairs uh, to Don McDougall, our uh, PA announcer here, as we get underway with the closing ceremonies and presentations. Coaches of the Hamilton Hurricanes and to the coaching staff of the 1993 Canadian Bowl champions, head coach Frank McChrystal, assistant coaches Bernie Schmidt, Ray Petrie, Jerry Orban, Rick Seaman, Ron Sanger, and Alex Smith. To the trainers, Crystal Ward, Crystal Pelche, to team manager, Gary Uren, to equipment managers, Brad Hirschmiller and Bill Bissett, Equipment personnel, Chris Wilkie, Patricia Sinclair, and Chap Chaplain Father Basil Chomas. And now for the presentations. Presenting the Bannerman Trophy to the outstanding offensive player of today's game is past CJFL Commissioner Peter Sawchuk. And the winner of this year's Bannerman Trophy is Regina Rams, number seven, Daryl Leeson. Now presenting the Paul Kirk Trophy to the outstanding defensive player of today's Canadian Bowl is CJFL Assistant Commissioner Ron White. The winner of the Paul Kirk Trophy is Regina Rams number 45, Randy Sorchensky. And now please join in congratulating the winner of this year's Canadian Bowl, the 1993 Canadian Junior Football League champion receiving the Canadian Bowl from Commissioner Gordon Cook, the Regina Rams. On behalf of the Regina Rams, thank you to all the fans who have participated and supported us throughout the year and to those who came out. I think you enjoyed yourself. You've had a great time at today's game. Come back to any of the CJFL Junior Games and we'll treat you to the same kind of excitement. Don't forget, get your season tickets for next year.